Hey guys. Part 2 of what if Naruto became the Hokage before the 5 Kage Summit. Hit like and subscribe if you like this one and also please check the author in the description. Let's start. We are pain, that's all. We are God. <laughs> Chapter 4 Intertwine The cold winter climate of Iron Country was a desert in reverse form. There may be trees, but there were barely any leaves in them. The fauna do not fare good as well, with a few species only existing in the harsh winter climate. In particular, only in Iron Country did exist an elusive bird known for its grace within the harsh frozen land. Its name was the Snow Owl. The said creature flapped its wings during midday, an hour it wasn't supposed to fly as it only flew during the night. The said bird landed on the forearm of a rather large man with orange hair. It nestled closely to the man as the man then said to Sasuke, There's a path in the west that's barely guarded. Said Jigo, Sasuke nodded. Good we're moving. Karen, detect Danzo for us. The Uchiha commanded, Karen seemed afraid of this however. H. Hey, I'm coming as well. Asked the redhead. Sasuke merely replied, Your ability is required the most at this moment. Sasuke then said to the half-man half-plant, Zetsu, was it? You will tell me how Danzo looks like. Don't lie to me. Zetsu merely smiled as he walked and said to Sasuke, Don't worry, I won't. Danzo is not an ally of ours. Sasuke looked up at the place named, The Three Wolves Fang Ma. He scowled at the said structure. Soon, Danzo would feel the taste of his blade being driven to his gut. That man shall pay for his crimes. As Sasuke and the others infiltrated the pyramid-like structure situating in the middle of the wolf's fang maw, Setsu looked around the area that will be the meeting place of the five Kages. His single present gazed back and forth from the outer area to the middle. This is disturbing. I don't see Danzo anywhere. Setsu mentioned. Sasuke was getting impatient. His anger was rising at the man that had escorted them in the summit. What? Are you telling me that Danzo isn't here? Sasuke bellowed at Setsu. His killing intent was starting to leak from him as he stared at Setsu who was starting to panic. If indeed that Danzo wasn't the Hokage, it meant that the disruption of the Five Kage's summit would lead to nowhere as Madara had implied that Sasuke was now the important factor in revealing Suki no Mi. But in order to do that, Sasuke would have to be conditioned to a level that will put him in the same category as his brother, Uchiha Itachi. Madara had specifically ordered Zetsu to monitor the boy's growth, for Sasuke would be facing the Senju clan's representative, Uzumaki Naruto. His patience wearing thin, Sasuke was about to go away when he had heard that the Hokage had finally come. Staring down, he couldn't very well see the person's face for it was being covered by the hat. Land of Iron Outer Walls Torian, be prepared to be on standby. We will commence our operation before the summit ends. Danzo mentioned, as he sat down in the hotel, and watched the three wolves fang ma as snow fell at an unbelievable rate. Danzo knew that the Kage summit was a movement that the Akatsuki couldn't very well ignore. But he also knew another factor in that summit, with the way things are going and Akatsuki finally capturing eight of the tailed beasts the five great villages will have to get aggressive and retrieve the Bijou by forming an alliance. And being that Kanoha is the only village that hasn't lost its host yet, they would definitely put the Hokage as the head of the alliance, the absolute leader. Danzo scoffed, picturing the young Hokage leading the alliance. The alliance would most likely fall apart if he leads. Danzo muttered that was why he had set up a strategy that would allow him leeway for the Hokage to surrender his position to him. Danzo showed a glint that wasn't present before, a small smile crept upon his wrinkled face. Summit Venue The Hokage had removed his hat, revealing a spiky blonde that looked no older than the Kazakage as one of the people supervising greeted him. I am glad that you could make it, Hokage Dano. Mentioned the man, the blonde nodded, the remaining people inside of the building looked at the boy that stood in the middle holding the hat of the Hokage. The rest were surprised however, they had thought that the Hokage would either be the busty blonde Tsunade, the long white-haired toad sage, Jiraiya or the elusive and shady Danzo. The Rakage walked closer and stood towering over the new Hokage who had stared at him intently as well, 
The hat with the symbol of lightning gave away the man's position to Naruto. Can I help you, Rakage? Naruto asked, without the suffix of Dano to state his disrespectful attitude staring up at the Rakage. The Rakage merely glared at the boy. For Kanoha's sake, you better speak your mind, boy. The Rakage merely said, as he walked away, Naruto didn't look intimidated. Oh my, I never thought that the Hokage would be one so young and so... good-looking. Naruto if ever he was intimidated by the towering Rakage somehow jumped in surprise at the voice that had been said from behind. Looking at his back he saw a very beautiful woman. Long red locks covered her right eye and wearing a dress that barely hid her very smooth skin on her shoulders and chest. She held the aqua blue hat that had the symbol of water. My, aren't you the cute Kage? Is your father the legendary yellow flash? I heard he was such a cutie as well. The Mizukage mentioned, hands on her mouth covering her mouth in astonishment. Naruto held up his hands and had motioned for the Mizukage to step back for she was too close for his own comfort. What were the sizes of those again? A B cup? Naruto mentally shook his head at the suggestive images entering his mind all of a sudden. Seriously, what was it with women and men of power? Naruto mentally asked himself, Why does this remind me of what Enko did to me during the Chunin exam? And why is that kid with the glasses staring at me like he's boring holes through my head? If Guy were to initiate that bet earlier, no matter how absurd it was, he would have won as he had hit it right on the money when the woman had ranted just how much she was desperate for a husband. Up above, Sasuke looked down seeing Naruto as being the Kage, and had thought of an idea. Sasuke, so does this mean we will now abandon the idea of assaulting the place? Karen asked, Sasuke shook his head and said this time, with a smirk. Someone with Kanoha's affiliation must know where Danzo and the elders normally reside within Kanoha and I happen to personally know the Hokage. The Kyubi Jinchiriki is here? Someone leaked false information from Kanoha. Setsu mentioned, fearing for the worst. He had seen the fight between Pain and the Nine-Tailed Host. Even though Sasuke had the advantage of the Sharingan, if Naruto had the ability to attack on all sides, the Sharingan would pretty much be useless. Add to the fact that the blonde's abilities further improved since last time and destroyed the five out of six pads of pain at the start, the nine-tailed host is a dangerous opponent to mess with. Perhaps this was a miscalculation on his part. However, Madara had made it a priority that Sasuke awaken Susanoo here. But if Sasuke were to die, then it would be pointless anyway. Zetsu see that his pride as an excellent spy was outclassed suddenly. He had double-checked the leaf village, but even then... The info he had gotten was scarce, it only made him cringe as to what Madara would do. Sasuke, on the other hand, remained silent, intent on watching the blonde that was interacting with his escorts, Kakashi and Guy, another pair of familiar faces. You mean to tell us that is Naruto? Now this is an interesting turn of events. If that guy managed to defeat Pain, then he might cause us a lot of trouble. Suijetsu mentioned, but Sasuke remained calm. We are facing Kage-level shinobi, Suijetsu. Facing Naruto or any of the other Kages should have reached to your mind that we are going to fight monsters. Sasuke mentioned in a matter-of-fact tone, Suijetsu could feel himself hyperventilating. This was something he knew that he'd face. But for some reason when that person named Naruto defeated Madara's most powerful minion, he was having second thoughts. From the stories he heard from other people, the members of Akatsuki were all S-class shinobi. Shinobi that were near or were at Kage level, not that he was discrediting Sasuke, but the fact they were facing five people that had the potential to kill any S-class missing Nin, it was suicidal. Sasuke may be a to S-class, but these were mid to high S-class ninjas that meant business. He just hoped that he and his team would survive this, except for Karen, Suijetsu didn't like her. She can convulse to death for all he cares. In fact he hated her. The reason he hasn't tried to kill the shrieking bitch was the fact that Sasuke wouldn't like it. Jugo. Well, as long as Sasuke could control his urges then he can live. Not much more was to be said. Below, the meeting was about to take place, as each of the delegations from Kanoha, Suna, IWA, Kumo and Kiri sat in front of the kanji that signify each of their villages. A person then sat in a separate table from them, 
his head supported by a wrap of bandages and his long flowing black hair covering his back. Good day, I am Mifun, the leader of the Land of Iron, I will represent as the mediator of this meeting. As the five kages sat, Mifun mentioned for them to place their hats on the table, as all the kages did so. Naruto looked around him, finding himself in the center of the meeting. To his back was a curtain with the character of fire written. Further his back was Kakashi and Gai. To his far right was the Mizukage, who was eyeing him, making Naruto pull his collar and gulp in nervousness. Next to the Mizukage to his near right was the Kazekage, Gara. To his near left was the Tsuchikage, who looked like he had a bad tumor on his nose and to his far left was the Reikage, whose build could intimidate anyone in the room if they were not on the same level as him. To his front, there sat the mediator, Mifun. The said man then said, Now we commence at the start of the summit. The Tsuchikage was eyeing Naruto closely and could feel himself having cold sweat. The Hokage's appearance was unbelievable. Many would consider that face in IWA as the face of the devil that had orders to carry out to utterly eliminate them, the butcher of IWA, the only ninja in history to have a flea on sight order if seen on the battlefield, the yellow flash. Very well, I'll start. To this, the eldest of the Kages turned his head towards the Kazakage, who spoke as his hands covered his mouth. Naruto merely sat, his arms on the armchair as he watched the young Kage speak. This Kage meeting is already pointless in my opinion. Eight of the tailed beasts had already been captured. Akatsuki has already amassed enough fire power to take down any country it sets its sights on. The only way for us to counterattack this organization now is to use a massive joint military exercise before they capture the nine-tailed host. This is how dangerous Akatsuki has become. Gara then I Naruto closely who could only look in seriousness. Naruto may very well be the last target that Akatsuki needs, and although it narrows down to him making it easier for the Akatsuki to be lured into a trap, they would most likely suffer immense amount of casualties just by guarding him. The Kazakage then continued, I sent requests for aid to the other major villages countless times, but they were all ignored except by the former Hokage. The Tsuchikage replied this young one has no grasp of politics and such, he must be taught, humph, if a country had its host captured then it has no business giving other countries orders, it's an embarrassment to the village. If you had lost your host, then why didn't you try to recover it in secret? Once it's stolen you can't expect other countries to help you. That was fact. In the age of disarmament, hostilities between other countries still exist though it waned in time. Jinchuriki were often regarded as secret, super-soldiers that were only deployed in times of great conflict. Secret weapons that could trigger massive genocides in an instant, they were the, either the trump card or the wild card of any village that had them. Hosts would determine a make or break decision. As such, destructive soldiers such as them were rarely ever needed in a time of inactivity. Time and resources were needed to make Jinchuriki truly capable of handling their beasts. Resources that were increasingly becoming scarce for military funding as peace continued. The Hokage frowned and then asked the Elder Earth Shadow, Then did you try retrieving them, your hosts? The pompous elder looked at the mirror image of the yellow flash and answered, No, the first Jinchuriki we had, Rushi retired from shinobi duty more than ten years ago. Since then, he has secluded himself and eluded most of my actions to retrieve him. Han vanished three years ago on a mission from Numa no Kuni. Han was a very dangerous subject, he was far too unstable. Instead he became a liability for the village. I couldn't very well exhaust time and money on a very unstable man. That ass! How dare that man treat hosts like they were test subjects! Naruto inwardly scowled at the eldest of the Kaigas. He tried to contain his anger, as a host himself, being considered a test subject was demeaning, dehumanizing. The man didn't very well understand human nature that well. He may have been old, but his way of handling things were far too merciless. Gripping the handle on his chair tightly, he mentally counted from ten backwards. He didn't want risking war on a village that had very well remained unaffected by Akatsuki's agendas. Naruto watched Gara as his eyes flinched a little, a sign of growing irate at the Tsuchikage as well. Naruto retained his poker face as did most of the remaining Kages. All of the Kages turned to the large man that had stood up. The gigantic and overbearing gauntlets on his arms were shaking along with his arms. 
The rakage immediately displayed what he exactly felt, by shattering a part of the table in front of him. To this, the remaining occupants of the room immediately jumped, coming right in front of the table of each of their respective leaders. Weapons were drawn, fists were raised, hand seals were made, and bloodline limits about to activate. The mediator spoke, I suggest you refrain from doing unnecessary actions. We came here to talk not to do such barbaric things. Each of the following kages motioned for their guards to stand down and go back to their places. Kakashi listened in closely as he had heard the rakage about to speak. Guy had said in a low voice, this isn't going exactly well. I didn't call of you here to talk about the tailed beasts. I called all of you here to know where your loyalties lie exactly. The kages raised their eyebrows in question. As they watched the rakage who was angry at all of the remaining kages, he then scowled as each of the kages was maintaining their calm. However, it seemed that the Hokage was starting to scowl on his own it was as if the tension was only getting higher and higher. Kanoha, IWA, Suna, Kiri, most of the members of that organization came from your villages particularly Kanoha. All of you and even the former kages, your nations had been under suspicion of using Akatsuki at least once. The rakage had shouted. Naruto had raised his voice this time, standing up in pure anger and outrage. What? Gara seemed surprised as well. He did not know this. He restated it in questioning the rakage used Akatsuki. What do you mean used Akatsuki? Naruto followed. This better have a good explanation why you're blaming my nation as well. The Sandane died because of one of its former members. My predecessor was placed in a coma by one of them. You tell me why my village would use Akatsuki when it was clearly invaded. Naruto was angered at this sudden revelation. Who would dare use those bastards in getting them closer to their goal? The rakage turned his head to the Kazakage and said, Your village council may not have told you this, but Orochimaru was enlisted to help in your invasion of Kanoha. It was unclear if he was still part of that organization. The largest kage then continued, Two of the former kages died as a result of that operation. I can't help but think that this was set up from the inside of one particular village. Naruto frowned deeper. It only seemed to connect to one person in his mind. Danzo. The Tsuchikage then spoke feeling as though it is the right time to say the facts about the current situation. The great countries are enjoying a relative time of peace. They are moving from military expansion to disarmament. As tension eases between the countries, the risks of war grow smaller. But therein lies a problem. The Mizukage added that Tsuchikage nodded as he continued. Military villages are a drain in a country's resources. With this relative peace and disarmament, what would happen if war suddenly broke out? We can't rely on ninjas that are inexperienced and untested in battle. We'd lose the war. We'd lose our prospective clients. Our village would fall. Gara seemed to get the idea of this. So one way of dealing with that was to use a mercenary force like Akatsuki? The Tsuchikage defended, it would take time and considerable resources for a village to build a powerful force. Akatsuki were professionals, they were hired for a relatively small amount, add to the fact that they showed good results. The rakage then pointed to the water shadow and said, what about Kiri? Intel reports stated that Akatsuki started as a mercenary group there. With no diplomatic relations to any of the countries, your village above all remained suspicious. The Mizukage bowed and said, To tell all of you the truth, there were rumors that the former Mizukage was being controlled by someone. It could have been Akatsuki, but with no leads and evidence to point it out to them, I didn't make a big deal out of it. It was then that the Tsuchikage pointed to the lightning shadow. Other countries wouldn't have used Akatsuki if only you didn't amass your military forces. Didn't you know that you caused panic when reports of your brother, being sealed with the Hachibi, and another host for the Nibi? The rakage then threatened the eldest of the Kages. You watch what you're saying, you old crone, or I'll smash you with my iron kuroe. Iron claw. The escorts were about to erupt again, until the Hokage had spoke. Stop. Before any of you start smashing each other's fists. I'm going to share vital info on you based on the intelligence that were gathered in Kanoha. I don't like where this is going any more than any of you do. But if we're going to discuss about Akatsuki, then I must very well tell you one key piece of information about the organization. The Hokage then continued, Seven days ago, 
My village was invaded again, this time directly by two of the members of Akatsuki. One of them was supposed to be the apparent leader of the group, up until in the middle of our fight. I've lost consciousness, and wound up losing control as the host of the Nine Tails. The remaining Kages looked at the blonde whose steel gaze caught the attention of everyone in the room. The fact that one of the hosts is here meant that Akatsuki may be coming for him right now. It was a thought that many would scoff at. The five most powerful ninjas gathered in one place may bring Akatsuki to them. But they could only bring death upon themselves if they decide to disturb this meeting, with the rakage out for blood, and with the Hokage relaying info on the remaining members, it was foolish for the organization to invade this event. I've studied in Fuenjutsu to a certain extent and although I'm no master, I'm adept at it. During in the lapse on my consciousness, the seal placed on me activated a fail-safe program that rewound the seal. It was in this process that I met with the imprint of the fourth Hokage. The Tsuchikage paled at the mere title of the man. He told me that during the night of the assault of the Nine Tails to my village sixteen years ago, he had met and fought with a man wearing a spiral mask. The same man that manipulated the leader of AIM, Nagato, was there when we had a mission in retrieving Uchiha Sasuke. The man was bearing the uniform of the organization. The rakage in his impatience said to the blonde Kage, Be quick about it, Hokage. My patience is running thin. Naruto ignored the comment and continued on, being the person here along with one of my escorts most experienced in having encounters with Akatsuki and most of its members. I met Uchiha Itachi and said to me one name that you all have heard. Naruto then said, Achiha Madara. To this, everyone's eyes were instantly on Naruto as he said while grabbing a book from his pocket, this spiral-masked man, the only person yet to be identified in this bingo book, might very well be the true leader of Akatsuki, Achiha Madara. I thought he was long dead, the eldest of the Kages said. Most of us did as well, it's unbelievable but, from the intelligence reports left to me from one of the root members, it's been confirmed. Naruto answered. I guess he really is a monster then. That Tsuchikage could only mutter, he had read stories of Uchiha Madara, the patriarch of the Uchiha clan, the man that had said to have the ability to control the bijou under his will. Most of the battles that had happened between him and Hashirama were legends that were passed down from generation to generation. If indeed Madara was still alive and is leading Akatsuki, then that means that the only thing that would let them win against Akatsuki would be take him down using large numbers. To use an audacious plan that would most likely result in him cooperating with the Kages around this very room. Mifun had interjected he exerted his authority as mediator, as the leader of a neutral country. I have to say, the leader of Akatsuki has studied the current of the times very well. He used the stability and suspicion of other countries to increase his power and spread his agenda unnoticed. If this continues, Iron Country will as well fall to this menacing threat. Mifune closed his eyes and breathed in, all of these revelations in one day. Everything was spiraling out of control. But there's always a silver lining in this. It's rare for the five Kages to have a meeting like this. What do all of you think? Until Akatsuki is taken care of, why don't you all form a five-village alliance? An alliance? The Reikage asked in surprise, it seemed impossible. Naruto didn't speak, contemplating on the situation. Things were getting out of hand, as he thought. Mifune continued, the chain of command should be uniform. We want to avoid any further confusion. But Tsuchikaj then stood from his seat and said, And the question now will be who will have the highest authority in commanding this new army? Mifune answered, You will only fight against each other to decide who it's going to be. Therefore, I would like for all of you to respect my decision as a neutral party. I will decide amongst you all. Outside the wolves' fang maw. Torian Fu. Commenced the operation. Danzo had commanded as he sat down on his chair, the two most elite members of Root nodded, quickly sending messenger birds to Kanoha. The only sound could be heard in that place was the violent howl of the snow storm occurring outside. Kanoha. Sitting beside the prone form of the Godain, Sakura had looked over her master in a sullen expression, the message that Sai left behind still lingered in her mind as well as Naruto's gnawing at her mind every second that she could rest. Sakura, please stop whatever you are doing, you and Sasuke are the cause of his greatest pain. As the Hokage, I'm going to do what's right for my people. 
Sure show. Tell me, what should I do? I... I don't even know if what I'm doing is right anymore. She asked, as she hugged her knees and rested her forehead against it. In her depression, she didn't see Naruto off unlike the rest of the villagers. The thought of him and their talk earlier, those blue eyes that steeled themselves for what is about to happen. It all made it hard to bear. Is it really worth it? Getting back Sasuke here, was it really that important for Team 7? Those times that the three of them spent together were the times that made her happiest. Even though Sasuke and Naruto often argued, the fact remained that Sasuke joined Akatsuki, assaulted and captured the Reikid's brother possibly to be left for dead. Questions then began popping up in the cherry blossom's head. Her thoughts were suddenly derailed when Sai had entered into Tsunade's tent and sat beside his teammate. Sakura looked questioningly at the pale member of Root. Sai was too quiet even for her, he would often show an oblivious smile and insult her, but now... It was then that Sai had bowed to greet the unconscious Godame and left a crumpled paper down on the ground right near Sakura. Sakura then grabbed the note slowly and unfurled it. She read, I am forbidden to say anything about this, but Danzo-sama is about to instigate a usurpation to power. I can only convene to you this message in written form for fear of the other members may have become suspicious of my activities. Danzo is going to kill Naruto. Please inform him. I can't do so. Sai. Is this true? Sai could only nod once. Sakura stood from the ground and said to Shizen in a whisper, Shizen-senpai, I need to go to Iron Country and inform Naruto of the situation before they can begin. With a nod, Shizen watched as Sakura went out, searching for team members that she may most likely need. She needed to hurry. Root was about to stage a coup d'etat. Summit. What? The rakage asked incredulously. Naruto was wide-eyed, too stunned for words. No, no. He shouldn't be doing this. It was too much. His responsibilities back at the village were already hard. The mediator spoke in a calm manner, explaining his reasoning to his decision. Out of all hidden villages, Kanoha has yet to lose their host. Also, to put him in the seat of power makes it an even better chance to limit Akatsuki's movement. I do not see the problem in this. If they still have their host, then that means that they are doing something right. That Suchikage agreed with the Rakage's outrage, but to take orders from a child, especially that of the Yellow Flash. I would never. I'm not biased against the fourth Hokage, but a teenager, who more or less took the title of Kage in more or less than a week ago. The alliance would surely fall, the Rakage exclaimed. Naruto, despite the raps against him, also thought it was true. He raised his arm and said I'd have to agree with them. I'm still not suited to take command of such a large-scale army. I don't think we will succeed if you allow me to. Mifu nodded and said, Even though that's true, your village has managed to keep you inside its walls. And you have experience in dealing with most of the members. It is best if you lead. Naruto then said I can't take this kind of responsibility. I don't. Mifian could understand the youth's words, but then said, A leader should set an example, is it correct? Naruto nodded, and Mifian spoke again, Then you are already an example to the other countries as you are the only host still accounted for. It means Kanoha knows how to handle the situation. If your predecessor can handle it, then you can as well. After all, it is the next generation's duty to surpass the previous ones. Naruto remained silent as he balled his shaking hands to fists. He wanted to be Hokage, he wanted to bring peace. But if he would lead this, it meant that he had betrayed his promise to Nagato. All he could do was bite his lip in frustration and close his eyes as he bowed, wishing himself to disconnect to the world. Damn it, what should I do? If I can't find the answer, then you'll be the one to find it for me. Okay? I believe in you, son. You'll be the one to find that answer. Be brave and continue down that path you have chosen. I'll always be with you. I am putting my faith in you. Yahiko's dream. My dream. Is now yours. Is this it? Was this the ideal peace I wanted to achieve? Peace through war. Sacrifice for prosperity. I'm betraying Nagato's trust. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. A samurai had dashed towards the meeting, 
interrupting the talks of the Kages as it shouted, Uchiha Sasuke has invaded the summit. Every Kage stood up from their seats and the water shadow asked, What is he doing here? The rakage, ever the ill-tempered man he was shouted, I don't care. Sure, Darui. We are going to take down Uchiha Sasuke. After a few minutes, everyone remained silent. Naruto then thought, Maybe finally confronting Sasuke would clear my head. It was then that Naruto stood up and said to Kakashi and Guy, We're going. The remaining Kages looked at the fire shadow whose eyes were overshadowed as he stared below. Kakashi and Guy nodded. The rakage may want to cool off his head, but I only want answers. Kakashi, Guy, we're going to support the rakage and the team from Kumo. With a flick of his hands together to form a middle index cross seal, three Kage Bunshin popped into existence as Naruto said, You all know what to do. The Mizukage licked her lips, such a fine young man indeed. The three clones nodded as they scattered away from the sight of the remaining Kages. Sasuke vs. Rakage Chidori Chirping of a thousand birds, Sasuke mentioned dashing towards the rakage in a straight line as the rakage surrounded his body with lightning chakra, his chakra flaring and buzzing like an overloading circuit around his body. The rakage then suddenly moved, stepping forward, his elbow drawn to the outreached hand of the Uchiha. As elbow and jutsu clashed, lightning crackled from the middle of the two fighters, the shockwave of the chakra forced back multiple samurai from their positions. Sasuke cursed as he jumped back, avoiding one of the rakage's mighty fists as it came down at him like a meteor. His chidori didn't work. Suijetsu exclaimed, as he dodged a blow from Darui who then pumped lightning chakra to the sword, shocking Suijetsu. The apprentice of Zabuza jumped back as Jugo appeared from behind, his curse seal partially activated, his arm contorting and changing form in a grotesque manner. The gigantic man from Taka rushed towards Darui who sidestepped and let the rampaging powerhouse Jugo ran past him, going straight to the rakage, who with the activation of the jutsu, instantly reacted, kneeing Jugo in the gut and then with his strong palm, literally pushed Jugo of his place and slammed the said man on the wall. Sasuke appeared from behind, his sword crackling with lightning. The rakage was quick to react as he ducked below the swipe and then grabbing Sasuke by the waist and raised him up like an adult would a child. Darui smirked. Even if Uchiha Sasuke has the Sharingan, Rakage Sama's Jutsu, Right Un, Yoroi, Lightning Release, Armor, allows his synapses to respond in the speed of light, causing his reflexes to be comparable to that of the fourth Hokage and his attacks to become faster and stronger. The Rakage then held Sasuke by the neck. He then jumped and with his enormous strength, slammed Sasuke down on the ground causing the ground beneath to collapse as the rakage shouted before power bombing Sasuke. Raigabomu. Ligerbomb. Sasuke was slammed on the ground, feeling the impact of the damage given to him. His head was shaking from the attack. The Uchiha was thankful he was alive by the set of bones from behind him. The rakage jumped back as black flames erupted from the ground. The gigantic Kage watched as Sasuke struggled to get up and with a sudden burst, he jumped up and performed its Kuyumi towards Shur who had used the Genjutsu temporary blinding and disorienting Sujetsu, giving Darui the chance to advance towards Sujetsu. Slashing the boy who had liquefied as his weapon went through the fang boy that looked like a shark. Shur had suddenly fallen when Sasuke triggered his Genjutsu, causing his left eye to bleed as did his right. Sasuke was panting, those three were strong, the rakage wasn't a kage for nothing, even with his sharingan, he couldn't follow the rakage's movements. It was far too fast for his eyes to react. The rakage instantly jumped towards Sasuke, who had evaded another vicious punch that shattered a part of the upper bleachers. Sasuke was suddenly surprised when the rakage could keep up with him. The rakage didn't even seem to put any effort to it, as the large shadow said, This is for my brother, Uchiha Sasuke. Erebo. Elbow. Thrusting his right elbow once again, lightning danced around him Sasuke couldn't evade in time as the elbow thrust towards his chest, pushing him in a powerful force that would have stopped the heart of any normal man. Sasuke was thrown away from the rakage, skidding and collecting dust clouds in his path, finally being embedded on the wall. Sasuke, in another fortunate set of events, triggered Susanoo once more, the bones were present again as it wrapped itself around Sasuke, stepping away from the rubble. Get out of my way. 
Sasuke said, hoarseness in his voice that fight with the rakage was starting to wear him down. In a room. The Kazakage, Suchikage, and Mizukage all stared on the table quietly with the Hokage wordlessly getting out to go and find some answers and the rakage taking out all that pent-up anger on the person that had done him wrong. That Suchikage merely smirked at this predicament, he had believed that the meeting, no matter how big news that it was, was one that would only involve the tongue lashing dished out earlier as the main action. But no, Akatsuki indeed didn't ignore this event. They knew that with the Kage's meeting, it meant that they would be faced with the five great nations themselves, that such a could shook his head. Such a mistake could prove to become bigger now that they decided that they should interfere. So the hawk has descended to search for his prey, only to descend in the pit of snakes. Gara muttered as he looked up, he had wanted to come and help, but if Naruto wanted answers first, then he would follow later. Right now, Naruto wanted answers from Sasuke, and that usually meant forcing Sasuke to calm down. Poetic are you, Kazakagedano? The water shadow commented Gara merely looked at the woman and said, When you can't sleep, thoughts of multiple objects invade the mind. I have them often when I was younger. The eldest of the Kages smirked as he said, My, my, what a passionate fool he is, that rakage. Doesn't he know the meaning of the word restraint? Gara replied, He speaks his mind and does things on his own, impulsive yet controllable. Humph, for a brat, you sure know how to pull the strings to this old man's temper. I see that the former Kazakage has taught you a lot, but he forgot to instill manners in you. The earth's shadow replied, another smirk appeared from the old man's face. Gara merely stood up and said, And you are a person who has lost himself in the title of Tsuchikich. Honor, tradition. I have no need for such petty things. In the line between life and death, manners are the least that I need. With that, the Kazakage walked away, motioning for his siblings to come with him, with Kankura smirking as their backs were turned on to the Tsuchikich. Yeah, that's right you arrogant prick, you got what you deserve. Kankura muttered. He is quite a pure one, isn't he, Ao? The Mizukage inquired to her eldest escort, the man nodded in reply, and the Hokage. Such intensity in his eyes as he walked away. If he were only a few years older. Perhaps it's time we interfere as well, Ao Chujuro. Come. The two escorts of Kiri nodded as the Mizukage stood and left towards the battle leaving behind the aging Tsuchikage. Very well. Shall we join them too, Akazuchi? Kurazuchi? The Tsuchikage smirked inwardly. It had been years since he had stretched his weary bones. He just wished his hip wouldn't suddenly ache at the chaos about to ensue, because from the looks of it, all hell would break loose the moment all five Kaigas act in one area. Konoha. Niji nervously looked around, four of them were about to depart as soon as they see a hawk landing from the direction of Iron Country, they would break for it. Are you sure about this, Sakura? Niji asked, Sakura only nodded. Troublesome. Only a week of rest and we're already sent on action. Let me remind you, Sakura, I just recovered from a broken leg. Shikamura muttered, shaking his leg a little as he stretched his neck from side to side. All that rebuilding took a lot of work this past week. He would go crazy if that coup d'etat managed to succeed, the work that all of the people had put in the reconstruction would be wasted. The hawk is coming closer, 100 meters from our starting point, Niji Nizan. No sightings of root members in our vicinity Hinata had informed them, the Hyuga genius nodded and said, Very well, I will be the second in command in this team. Our mission right now is to inform Hokage-sama of what Danzo is about to do. We will intercept them when the summit ends, hopefully, this will end peacefully. Sakura-san, you shall be the one to provide medical support. Hinata-sama would be our tracker. Since Kiba and Shino are unavailable, Shikamaru, you will be commanding officer, I'm sure you already know. Shikamaru waved his hand off and said, yeah, yeah, I know. Just let me remind you that going to Iron Country would take us at least two days at our top speed. With the possibility of encountering Danzo, we should take a different route. It would be longer, but it would be sufficient enough for us not to be tracked down and be safer. I don't want any casualties on both sides. We're already as thin and as worked out as it is. We don't need to outright kill each other. Hinata Niji, put your digitsu to good use. The hawk has just landed. 
Hinata mentioned, Shikamura nodded. Adjusting the trench knife strapped on his back, Shikamura then nodded, All right, let's go. With a flick of their hands, they jumped from their positions and into the tree branches above, going northward towards Iron Country. Iron Country. Sasuke found out that despite having Susanoo, it was still incomplete. He could still feel the impact of the attacks coming from the wreckage, and they hurt. A lot. Surrounding himself in the black fires of Amaterasu, he once again underestimated the wreckage's bullheadedness in this situation, as the gigantic man literally blasted his left arm through the everlasting black flames, with Sasuke feeling the damage of his attack hitting him a few centimeters below his windpipe. Sasuke fell down, rolling on the ground as was met with a wreckage, prepared to deliver another attack. Jiriken. Dirapu. Guillotine drop, the wreckage said, as Sasuke triggered yet again, his Manjiki Sharingan, kaleidoscope copy will I, flaring to life as the red of his iris and the three tomo I began to shape to that of an atom as black flames erupted from the ground, Sasuke muttered. Enten, Kagatsuchi. Flame release, Kagatsuchi. Black flames erupted from the spaces above Sasuke's chest. Five columns of black flame was about to swallow burn the wreckage alive, until sand seemed to explode between them. The said objects were now drizzling on the open floor. The Kazakage had controlled his sand once again as the wreckage was flung back as he had heard a voice coming from the back. Fuinjutsu. Fukuhun, Sealing Arts, Fire Suppression Seal. Countless tendrils of chakra were shot over to the ebony fire as the black flames that danced around samurai and the rakage arm alike were swallowed into a small scroll that had the words of snake, boar and tiger written on it. The design around the area that the black fire were collected were two snakes as it opened its maw and the kanji of fire written big in the middle. Sasuke looked at the jutsu that had triggered, this has never happened before. The black fire was suppressed from someone not him. It was then that he heard footsteps, walking and in rhythm, the sounds of the sandals slamming on the floor, getting louder and louder as the Uchiha looked on in the shadows as a pair of feet emerged along with the hem of his Hayori, his voice ever familiar to the Uchiha as he said. Hello Sasuke. Chapter 5 Yin and Yang A few minutes earlier, Zetsu had no choice to make up for his mistaken Kanoha, he knew of one alternative for Madara to get what he wants and in the same process, redeem his mistake. The leakage of false information from Kanoha had hurt Setsu's pride. It had a major setback to their plans of course, he wanted to inform Madara at least before, but it seemed the route from the area that they had infiltrated to had been guarded tight now. He could probably escape on his own, but leaving Sasuke's little troop on their own was suicide as Sasuke might do something worthy of attention. It was a blessing, though, that Sasuke was actually willing to fight the people from Kanoha. Perhaps it was his blind hatred of anyone affiliated with the Leaf Village, but nonetheless, Zetsu, as Madara had been doing, would capitalize that hatred of Sasuke to suit the needs of Akatsuki. After all, one man who is blind in his hatred would need a guide to direct his anger. Madara had given him direction, Sasuke had the drive. What he needed was further advancement. So he had formulated a plan, in order for Sasuke to grow strong, without dying from the five greatest shinobi that are currently walking in this very room. He sank to the floor as he reminded Sasuke not to be seen for a moment. Sasuke's eyebrow was raised in question. Once Setsu had appeared down below, he gave a menacing chuckle as he said with a sneer, Achiha Sasuke is in this very building. Find him if you dare. With that, Zetsu was seemingly stabbed like an animal by the samurai as their chakra-powered blades pierced through the body of Zetsu who, unknown to the rest, began spreading some dust into the area unsuspectingly. And then... Pandemonium. Sasuke had jumped down below filled with his rage, as he activated his Sharingan with the samurai already going for him. If you are going to block my path then... Be prepared to pay for it. It was in the midst of his terrorizing that the wreckage had appeared, bursting with that armor of lightning. The lightning shadow came at him with ferocity of a bloodhound, nailing Jugo on the wall as his escorts dealt with Sujetsu. Although he had managed to be relatively unharmed with a few bruises and cuts, along with the bleeding eyes those blows coming from the infamous wreckage hurt like a bitch. The wreckage was fast as he was powerful. 
his taijutsu was completely unbelievable. The imposing physique of the man showed in battle, and although he was limited to close-range combat, that didn't mean he couldn't get close to him fast. The bout with the rakage had proven to be more of a challenge than he ever thought, disregarding the fact that the man was willing to literally burn his arm off from Amaterasu just to nail a powerful clothesline just below his neck. He almost had the man with his new technique, up until sand literally exploded in between them with the rakage being flung back to the area where the Kazakage was. Sasuke seemed surprised at first, but was more shocked than anything else that his black fire, the everlasting flames of Amirasu began to move, not to his will, but being absorbed in a scroll. The black flames flickering about everywhere and burning the samurai were slowly grabbed by the tendrils of chakra and in a few seconds it was gone. It was unbelievable. Up until now, no one, in his mind, had ever stopped Amaterasu except him. He hadn't thought it was possible to do so. But there it was being sealed into that scroll. In the midst of his shock, footsteps were heard as it slowly approached the scene. Each step, almost a second apart from each other, as if it was the only noise that Sasuke could hear in this room. With a resounding last step, Sasuke looked around and saw a pair of black sandals, with the black hem of a Hayori. Sasuke looked up as the man's features were covered by the shadows as he spoke. Hello, Sasuke. That familiar brought a smirk to his face as he said to the man, Naruto. So you're the Hokage now, eh? Good for you. Naruto seemed to frown. Something felt different about this Sasuke. It was as if Sasuke was looking at him like an amused psychopath. It seemed that his indifference back then felt different. It felt like he had one thing above all else to Naruto. Contempt. I've got questions that need to be answered, Sasuke. Naruto mentioned, looking into the evolved Sharingan eyes that Sasuke possessed. Sasuke laughed a little and said to the blonde, still the idiot, I see. I'll answer any question you might want. Sasuke then pointed to his face with his thumb and defiantly said to Naruto, If you can land a punch against me. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this and replied, Still the arrogant bastard. If that's how you want it then, fine. Rakage, Kazakage, don't interrupt. The Rakage replied, outrage in his voice, What? Hokage. We should take him down this instant. We can take him down with the three of us. The Kazakage raised his arm and said to the lightning shadow, This is an opportune moment for us to gather information about Akatsuki and their plans. Hokage Dano wants answers Rakage Dano. He knows what he's doing. The rakage grunted and crossed his arm all the while saying, It sounds as if you knew the Hokage yourself, Kazakage. Fine then, I'll let the Hokage have his way with Uchiha Sasuke. He then continued, But if things get out of hand, I'll personally end this. Naruto merely approached forward to reveal his yellow sage eyes. Thanks for that rakage. He said, not turning his eyes for one moment from Sasuke. The Uchiha looked at him with that confident grin again. He may have wasted almost half his chakra from his last fight, but it won't be a problem now. Let's do this, Naruto. The blonde wordlessly dashed forward cocking his fist back, as he leaned his body forward increasing his speed. The two dashed towards each other with Sasuke closing in faster than Naruto. Once Sasuke appeared in front of Naruto, the blonde then hurled a punch at Sasuke, who effortlessly leaned his head to the side, narrowly hitting him in the face but something of unknown force collided with his cheek, sending him flying back from the blow. A grunt of pain escaped from his mouth being thrown back from his position. Naruto merely smirked at that when Sasuke was flung back. Somehow, that felt satisfying. Sasuke didn't know what hit him. One moment he had evaded that punch, the next something rattled his brain as his face was met with something akin to a punch. He stood up. Looking at Naruto intently, his eyes didn't see that attack. Did his QB chakra activate again? No, even though it was a different chakra, he could still see it. Then, what had hit him square on the cheek that managed to break his Sharingan's predicting pattern? First question then Sasuke, what are you doing here? Naruto asked. Sasuke answered scowling, lucky shot but I'll answer, I came here on the pretense that I was to assassinate the presumed Hokage, Danzo. Naruto raised his eyebrow at that and then said, Obviously he's not the Hokage. I am. Second question, why are you targeting Danzo? Sasuke dusted himself and said, 
If you can punch me again, I'll tell you. He sneered at Naruto at that one to which the blonde looked impassive at. His controlled anger was reaching to the limit. You like hurting yourself much, Sasuke? Said the fire shadow as he went for his stance of his Kawazakumite, Frog Kata. Sasuke charged at Naruto head on, his Sharingan eyes spinning faster than normal his clairvoyance activating at an increased pace. He stopped and jumped to the side as he saw the punch about to collide with his face. But as soon as he thought he was out of range of the attack, his chest was rattled to what seemed like being smashed through a brick wall. Sasuke coughed out blood at that as Naruto, without letting up, punched Sasuke directly at the face this time, resulting in the said Uchiha to collide to one of the standing pillars around the room. Ready to answer yet? Sasuke growled this time as he got out of the rubble that had once been a column. To this, Sasuke spoke, Danzo, along with the elders, Hamura and Koharu, they ordered the massacre of the Uchiha clan to stop an attempted coup d'etat stemming from my clan. Itachi was forced to kill every last one of them. That's why Konoha is my target right now. Every last one. Every last one that subject themselves to follow Danzo and the others. Sasuke for once was growing frustrated. His Sharingan was absolutely useless against Naruto in close range. If he could do all those invisible hits at a moment's notice, Sasuke knew he wouldn't stand a chance against the blonde if he was up close. He'd resort to a different tactic then. Naruto was startled at this. He didn't know anything about the Uchiha massacre. But to him, right now, the most important bit was to obtain the information that he needs. If your target is Danzo then I'm sorry, but he's not here. However, I can't let you involve others that clearly did not know what happened that night. Tell me Sasuke, why did you involve yourself in Akatsuki? Asked the fire shadow. To get what I want. Sasuke answered as he crouched down. His hand crackled as lightning began to seep around the Uchiha, dancing like crescent waves and lines of electricity wisps flailing around, the sound of a thousand birds chirped. Sasuke Sasuke was surprised. He could hear the voice of the blonde on his back who was now sitting on it. Do you know why the Uchiha were killed off? Sasuke let the lightning from his hand spread throughout his body, activating his Chidori Nagashi, one thousand birds current. Naruto jumped and landed on one of the supporting beams as Sasuke shouted. They were suspected of releasing the nine-tailed fox sixteen years ago. They couldn't do it. The fox was a natural disaster on its own. There's nothing to prove that the Uchiha had some involvement in it. Sasuke screamed. Naruto shouted, And you think murdering those countless innocents would satisfy your vengeance? You're only doing what those advisors had done. And you say that you're different from them. Sasuke retorted, You think that I care about that? Did those advisors spare my clan's children, men and women alike? Those weren't involved. There were children in that compound that haven't even walked and Kanoha ordered for their deaths. You think it would justify just to that? Just to their deaths? Naruto jumped down and dashed towards Sasuke as Sasuke jumped back and brandished his katana. Your ways of thinking are flawed said Sasuke as he dashed at Naruto with his sword outheld. Lightning began to crackle in accordance to his chakra as lightning danced around his blade. Naruto grabbed his Fuma shuriken, and wind began to encircle around it, swirling as his chakra transformed to wind. So are yours. You think whatever you're doing would end in the scenario you want. You think through that you'll gain peace. You're just the same as that bastard Danzo. Shut up. Don't compare me to that scum. What's not to compare? He ordered to kill every last one of you. You're going to kill every last one from Kanoha. Your bastard of a brother was just the same as you are. Don't you dare speak of my brother in that way. Itachi died for Kanoha. He suffered through such an ordeal just so that everyone from Kanoha can enjoy that fake transition of peace. As blades and jutsu clashed, Nullifying each other, Naruto and Sasuke jumped back. Sasuke was starting to breathe deep. Even then, that isn't the right way to obtain your peace. You may have killed people in Konoha, but the survivors will learn to hate you as well. They'll come for your blood. You think that cycle will end with just you delivering your idea of justice? Naruto shouted. 
Sasuke began throwing him kunai and shuriken that Naruto deflected as they ran sideways and clashing with their respective weapons in the myriad of columns in that building. Sasuke pointed to the blonde and screamed, You try telling that to the graves of every last Uchiha that were murdered on that night. Sasuke threw a kunai at the blonde. Naruto dodged by jumping and landing to one of the columns as he ran up and began jumping from column to column letting loose a volley of shuriken to Sasuke, who evaded and took cover from with one of the columns he used as a shield. Do you even know what really happened the night of sixteen years ago? Naruto shouted. Sasuke then with his kunai and steel cable, flicked it at the blonde who jumped away. Another kunai was thrown, this time, faster than the first weapon as it ricocheted with the kunai with the steel cable, trying to wrap around itself at Naruto who cut the cable down with his wind chakra powered from a shuriken. He hid behind the columns, landed down on the ground, and immediately sensed the presence approaching him fast. It was then that Jetsu had appeared from behind him, Kabikiri Hocho, decapitating carving knife. In mid-swing Naruto had caught the gigantic blade in the semicircle ring just above the handle with left hand. Just with one hand. How strong is this guy? Suijetsu thought. Naruto immediately pulled the gigantic sword towards him, pulling Suijetsu as well. Naruto tossed the Fuma Shuriken in his right in midair and then cocked his right arm back. In that midst of a second, Naruto punched Suijetsu liquefying the boy as Naruto tore through the torrential water down to his legs. Suijetsu reformed and stumbled back. It was then that Kakashi appeared and shocked the water puddle with a simple right on making Suijetsu pass out. Right on, Remyaku, lightning pulse. Naruto turned around, Kubikiri Hocho still in his hands, and impaled the approaching fully transformed Jugo by the shoulders with the sword and pinned him to another column. Jugo groaned in pain a little but smiled as his body transformed once again and formed what seemed to be ten holes above his head and his sides. Chakra collected like little globules and was about to fire at the fire shadow. With his outstretched hand, Naruto formed a Rasengan before Jugo could finish his attack and slammed it on the said man's abdomen, flinging the gigantic man back with the force of a hurricane and slamming him to another wall, effectively rendering him useless in the fight. It was then that Sasuke had appeared behind the blonde. Despite his sensing abilities, he wasn't fast enough compared to Sasuke's speed, his right eye contorted and changed in the shape of an atom, signaling the activation of the Manjiki Sharingan. Tsukuyami. The eye contact was not to be, however, as suddenly, one of Naruto's escorts had intervened. Super dynamic entry. Guy had entered into the fray and kicked Sasuke by the side that was blindsided by Guy's direct flying kick to his abdomen. Guy didn't stop there as he lifts Sasuke with his leg and gave another direct kick to Sasuke, sending him skidding on the ground. Are you all right, Hokage-sama? Naruto nodded and then looked towards Sasuke, who was now panting heavily. Naruto's sage mode had deactivated, his red and yellow sage eyes fading from him as he saw Sasuke beginning to stand his eyes had once again flared to life, turning and contorting into the Manjiki Sharingan. Naruto could feel the chakra building up with Sasuke as it began to grow and grow, forming the bones of Susanoo, this time managing to complete the skeletal structure on its own. Sasuke was breathing heavily. Let's see. You break. Into my. Absolute defense now, Naruto. Sasuke mentioned between his heavy breathing. Naruto had then rummaged through his pouch and grabbed a scroll from his pocket, biting it between his teeth. He had used a set of five hand seals to direct his chakra. Boar. Dog. Bird. Monkey. Sheep. During his training, he had inquired the toad sages about using the reverse summoning technique. The sages scratched their heads at this. The reverse summoning was first used when they summoned Naruto for his senjutsu training and then to his fuinjutsu training. To them, the reverse summoning was only done by the summons themselves and that there could possibly be no way that he could do this on his own. Flashback. Reverse summoning you say? Well, that's a different matter, Naruto-chan, said Fukasaku scratching his head. Normally only we can perform it. The reverse summoning functions for the summon animal to transport the contractor to where the said animal is. The idea of summoning your Kage Bunshin with the sage chakra is different. You have the same chakra signatures as them, and so we can do that. But if you want to, 
it's going to be different from any regular summoning technique. You need some sort of guidance to do that. The Yandame Hokage, I believe, could do that by using a special seal that lets his chakra home in on that seal, and then use his infamous Horatian no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God skill, to travel there. If you can use a seal that is somewhat of a beacon for your chakra detecting skill in Sinin mode, I think it might just work. Fukasaku mentioned. Naruto nodded and understood, as he began reading through some of the seals in his book that pertained to use a seal like a beacon, he came upon a peculiar seal in the book that was used when someone is lost in any given terrain. The seal would automatically light up whenever there was a corresponding seal with the same design. It acted like a messenger between two towns and relayed the position of that said person through chakra. With Sinin mode, he could detect chakras around him, as long as he is exposed to that certain chakra for a period of time. However, searching for his own chakra was more difficult. Not only was the familiarity of his chakra the problem with detecting it, the problem lay in that when detecting the chakra of his clones in any location his own chakra would interfere to know where the location of the clones was. It was then, that through his brainstorming, Naruto's mind had discovered something. Whenever he had summoned any toad in time, before they appear, a runic circle appeared and crawled to the ground just before the smoke had erupted and revealed the toad that he had summoned. Fukasaku mentioned that the circle was the considered the homing destination of the summoned animal, or human. The normal medium on that was the contractor's blood. Naruto had then began to think, what if he modified that circle? What if he placed a different medium to the circle to summon one of his kagabunshin? With that thought, he went again and asked the toad sages, Fukasaku and Shima, to assist him in making that summoning circle. The toads looked at each other and nodded. It was theoretical, but it might just work. Flashback end. Naruto then opened the scroll and in it was the summoning circle rune that appears once Kuchiyos no Jutsu, summoning technique, was used. Naruto then grabbed the paper seal from his pocket, the seal that homed in on another seal that had the symbol of the hare, for speed and travel, rat for dispersion and multiplication, bird for tracing and location and a drawing of a spiral above the characters to activate the circle. Naruto slammed the seal towards the scroll with the summoning circle written right down in the middle, immediately the flow of chakra went to the seal as it began to sway to the chakra and homed in on one random seal that had the same design as that of the seal that Naruto had. In one resounding pop sound, there appeared a Kagab Bunshin in front of him, sitting in the lotus position with its eyes closed, and Naruto said, Dispel quickly. The said Kagab Bunshin did as it was told and vanished in a cloud of ninja smoke. Naruto's eyes began to change again, going from its cerulean blue color to yellow. His pupil expanded sideways and grew a few millimeters as a red outline began to appear on the top of his eyelids. Another weird jutsu coming from you. Sasuke mentioned, as he let the skeletal form of the belligerent storm god to grab the gourd to its side and like dripping water splashed in an arc as it threw it in the air, forming an ethereal blade made of pure chakra. Naruto was about to dash towards Sasuke, until he was stopped by Kakashi, Sharingan I staring into the horn skeletal frame of Susanoo who held his shoulders and said, Wait, Hokage-sama. I can see that chakra is forming like some sort of coating. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Please approach with caution. Naruto stopped and hesitated. Sasuke sneered at the blonde, a smile forming on his face as he said to Naruto, What's wrong though? Where's that bravado that you had three years ago? Naruto frowned at Sasuke and then performed his signature move. Kagabunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique Three clones then popped into existence as all of them began to dash towards Susanoo. The three clones then used the field to their advantage and hid among the pillars, dashing in a random direction per clone. Sasuke looked around, with those columns blocking his view of the Sharingan. There was no way to predict them. It was then a clone from above with a Chouotama Raisingan, ultimate great ball spiraling sphere, prepared, jumped and headed straight towards Sasuke's position, the ball already close to the skull of Susanoo. Swinging the sword of Tatsuka upwards, the sword impaled the clone as it vanished in a cloud of smoke, immediately. The two clones have already appeared from the side both with the same attack as did the one above going to his side. Sasuke turned his head around to the right and let the gigantic sword swing the ephemeral blade. He had managed to hit the clone, with another slash from below, 
but the other one had passed through his defense as the clone slammed the giant Razengan towards the side of the storm god. Sasuke then felt his technique shatter lightly. The side of the storm god rippled in the slightest and the free skeletal arm of Susanoo swatted the clone away like a fly. I guess I have no choice then. Naruto muttered as he put his hands in a familiar middle index cross seal and two clones popped into existence. The original held out his right hand as Chakra began to swirl. His two clones began pouring Chakra to the technique. Wind rustled around the blonde as Guy and Kakashi stood back. The Chakra gathered in Naruto's palm was enormous. As the ultimate jutsu of form and shape manipulation roared to life, the four blades that surrounded the sphere spun like a windmill and it began spinning faster and faster as time progressed. What are these chakra levels? The rakage asked the condensation of the chakra in Naruto's palm was unbelievable even from this position. He could feel just how dense the chakra was. Gara seemed to be curious as well. The grinding noise of the technique certainly didn't help. It was like a spinning fan. The wind blades were so visible that it was awe-striking as it was frightening. His two siblings looked on from their aid of the samurai feeling the same level of goosebumps coming from the fire shadow. Futon, Ross and Shuriken. Wind release, spiraling Shuriken. Naruto held the technique up. The winds began to grow wild and fierce. Naruto then threw the spinning chakra Shuriken straight to Sasuke who was surprised that a properly maintained jutsu like that could be thrown for long distances. The Shuriken spun like a whirling buzz saw of death, grinding and spinning its way straight to Sasuke's Susanoo. The sword was then placed close to the anticipated site where the chakra shuriken would place its deadly attack. Sword clashed with shuriken as it began to fight and shred towards the ephemeral sword. Sasuke had found it hard just deflecting the said attack away with his sisanu. It wasn't even dispersing the chakra. It was then that the blades of the jutsu dispersed leaving behind an orb that Sasuke viewed with his sharingan. With his enhanced vision, his eyes grew wide. Inside the glowing orb of destruction, the form of the chakra began to destabilize and the added wind chakra began to expand. The orb had hit the sword a few milliseconds later. It felt like time stood still. Just for a moment, and then... Boom! A large explosion tore through the hallways of the said room, as the initial shockwave gave a torrential howl all around the area, completely shattering the wall behind Sasuke. At the epicenter of the explosion... The blast radius of the attack began to literally eat away at Susanoo, as the microscopic needles of the Rasen Shuriken's explosion. The intimidating stature of the skeletal frame of the storm god was starting to disintegrate as its bones began to turn to dust. It was here that the explosion had ended. Sasuke was near the brink of zero chakra reserves he was already kneeling on the ground and his breathing became even more labored. He said between pants I haven't. Lost yet. Yotan, Yokai no Jutsu. Lava release, melting apparition technique, yelled the newcomer, obviously female, and a stream of the said element was thrown in the air. The lava had landed just to the back of Sasuke, where the gaping hole from the Rasen Shuriken was evident. It may have been Sasuke's only escape route, but it would not be possible. He would have to cross the stream of lava that was lying there waiting for him. And with his chakra levels, he would not be able to escape. Is this. How far I could have possibly have gone? Is this my death? Sasuke thought as before him had appeared the Mizukage, her escorts on her side. His Susanoo was starting to collapse. That attack from Naruto, and his low chakra reserves were punishing him to his limit. There was no way. No way that he'd be beaten like this so easily. It's such a shame for a man, a handsome one such as you, to die. Don't worry before you die. I will be giving you a kiss to remember by in hell. The water shadow said, giving a wry smile at the Uchiha as she held her hands together and formed another seal. Futon, Koma no Jutsu. Boil release, skilled mist technique. A colorless mist escaped her mouth as she breathed out. The haze of the mist littered her area as her two escorts jumped back and let the acidic atmosphere around the Mizukage and Sasuke to take place. I said to everyone not to interfere with our matters. Naruto exclaimed, the water shadow answered to him. But this is a terrorist, Hokage Dano, and I can't forgive Akatsuki for manipulating Yugurasama, the Yande Mizukage. Naruto then shook his head and sighed in defeat. He finally said to Sasuke, 
Sasuke give up. This is your last chance. Naruto mentioned, giving Sasuke the ultimatum. Sasuke snarled at Naruto as his answer. Naruto closed his eyes as he could see that the area around the Mizukage and Sasuke starting to distort. It seemed that the last technique that the Mizukage had done was evaporating liquid faster than expected. The acidic atmosphere was even starting to actually melt the skeletal frame of Susanoo as parts of its bone liquefied and fell to Sasuke's arms, burning him. Sasuke screamed in agony, the pain was terrible. It was then that sets earlier, the man that had seemingly dispersed himself from the arena jumped in the last second activating his Hoshi no Jutsu, spore technique and said all the while laughing, ha ha, all you kages are idiots. You never took mind that I used this technique earlier on if any of you noticed. It was then that Setsu had begun growing around the people in the room as they began siphoning chakra around the area. Wrong move. Naruto mentioned and immediately the Zetsu that had been absorbing his chakra seemed to petrify. He looked down and saw that his body was turning to that of a stone frog. With a horrified look, the petrifying effect crawled down the spore technique. The Zetsu that clung to Naruto turned immediately to a statue and Naruto punched the brittle statue with his fists. His sage mode was partially, forcefully finished. He then saw another Zetsu clone that seemed petrified falling down to the floor and then shattering. Up above, that such a kitch had appeared and jumped down, his hands were clasped together and saw that a giant cube that looked like it was made up of dirt around. Jintun, Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu. Dust release. Detachment of the Primitive World Technique The cube then smashed below on the prone form of the Uchiha looking ready to pass out from chakra exhaustion. The giant cube then fell on Sasuke as the area around the cube was disintegrated to dust. Naruto was about to dash to the scene when he felt another chakra signature that had suddenly appeared in the area, who looked on to his top right. Standing on the railings in the balcony, shouldering Uchiha Sasuke, was the man that wore the orange spiral mask. Achiha Madara. Yo. Konoha. Shizen was running to find Yamato. Out of all the people that Naruto trusted next to Kakashi as a senior, it was the ANBU captain that had been spliced with the first Hokage's DNA. When she found out from Sai of what was about to happen, she ran immediately outside as soon as Sakura ran outside and headed to Iron Country. When she had found the face-plated ninja resting for a bit in a pile of wood, she immediately notified him of the situation. What? A coup? Since when? Since Hokage-sama has left. Right now, there are probably root forces stationed just outside the gates for a complete lockdown with half of the forces of root just outside the border of Iron Country. What do you suppose we do, Yamato-san? Shizen asked. Please inform Shikako-san, you must keep this as low-key as possible. We only need Shinobi loyal under the Hokage to be informed of this, and I'll handle those in the ANBU. Shizen nodded and left. Yamato did as well, what bad timing this was. Right at the moment that he and some of the Konoha Shinobi had been rebuilding a district of downtown Konoha, Yamato had hoped that the members of Root did not begin their patrol already inside. He needed as much cover as possible for them to come up with a counter-strike force. Summit Naruto glared at the man with the spiral-masked man Yu. His eyes narrowed as Setsu had instantly appeared behind Madara and began infusing chakra to Sasuke. The rakage spoke. What are you doing here, Uchiha Madara? Uchiha Madara sat down on the railings and said, Oh nothing, I was just hoping for Sasuke to at least critically injure one of you. He then eyed every single prominent figure inside the room. It seems I made a slight miscalculation as to who the Hokage actually was. No wonder Sasuke wasn't able to hurt at least one of you, though I wonder, why did Sasuke not use Amaterasu? Naruto remained silent and grabbed the Fumashuriken and two scrolls on the floor. Hokage, is this the person you were talking about earlier? The Reiki asked and the blonde fire shadow nodded and said in a low voice, That's Uchiha Madara. Uzumaki Naruto so you're the Hokage now? I can't believe you managed to throw a wrench to my plans. Tell me, how did you make Nagato betray me? The man in the spiral mask asked. Naruto glared at Tobi and said, like I'll tell you. You use Nagato, just as you are using Sasuke right now. You bastard, you used Nagato's fragile state and almost destroyed Konoha. Uchiha Madara chuckled. 
The rest of the Kages looked on between Naruto and Madara. Naruto then vanished from Madara's sight and instantly appeared from behind, his arm phased through the masked man as did the flowing natural energy, completely missing Madara. The punch, however, shattered the railings to which Madara sat. You sent the fox to Konoha. You managed to plant the suspicion of the elders on the Uchiha. You were the one responsible for turning Sasuke the way he is now. Madara then said, I admit. I was the one to turn Sasuke the way he is like now. But I simply gambled on the choice and Sasuke followed through. He followed me. I have no further answers to that. Through these accusations, Madara had forgotten one small detail that had been with Sasuke since the beginning, Karen. Karen was listening in closely. She was fearful when the five Kages had entered the same room to deal with Sasuke. She could swear that someone inside the room had been able to detect her, but she didn't pay mind to it. As long as she didn't make a move, she was fine. However, when she heard of the accusations of the Hokage, she was starting to have doubts on this man. And however she saw it, it felt like it somehow made sense to her. The way he spoke to them when they were asked to capture the eight-tailed beast, the way he spoke when they were about to go to Konoha. It was as if the man with the mask knew how to push Sasuke's buttons and make him go to anywhere and do anything Madara wanted to. Madara then saw Karen and paused for a moment, and immediately, another distortion on space happened. It looked like a spiral and began to swallow Sasuke in it like water is to a drain until Sasuke disappeared. Just like before, that person is able to manipulate the time-space folds. Kakashi muttered as the rest of them could only look at Madara in an odd expression. Karen, please, heal Sasuke's injuries. Zetsu, grab Sejetsu and Jugo and get them out of here. I'll meet up with you later. Zetsu did as he was told and grabbed Sejetsu and Jugo's down forms. Jugo, who had earlier absorbed fresh cells from a down samurai, had reverted back to his human form after he painfully extracted Kubikiri Hocho from his arm. Now, Hokage, do you really want to know what had happened on the events that lead to the massacre? Naruto paused. He wanted to know himself. Sasuke seemed angry at him earlier when he mentioned Itachi. Could it be that the massacre wasn't portrayed as it was supposed to be? That Uchiha Itachi had gone rouge and killed everyone from the Uchiha clan? It was then that Madara spoke about the night of sixteen years ago, the night when the nine-tailed fox had assaulted the village. Then to the following events that lead to the massacre. Naruto's skull further increased. When Madara was done, Naruto shouted, Then it really was you. This was all you're doing. What business do you have here then? I doubt that you just told us a history lesson about the massacre of the Uchiha clan. That such a kid had mentioned. Madara answered, I yes, I'm just here to talk about the moon's eye plan. The people looked on, puzzled and intrigued by Madara's behavior. You see, long ago, when the sage of six paths was still alive, he stopped a monster of a great, near-apocalyptic proportions. He then continued, the Jubi was a monster that was the origin of the tailed beasts. The sage of six paths sealed the Jubi into his own body and acted as the very first Jinchuriki. He then sealed the body of the ten-tailed beast up on the moon that which he created. On his deathbed, the sage of six paths was worried that the Jubi shall roam again, therefore, he divided the chakra of the ten-tailed beast to nine different beasts on their own, known today as the Bija. My plan is simple. I will collect every tailed beast there is and fuse them together and seal it in me. And with that power, I will ascend to the moon and fuse with the Jubi to project the most powerful Genjutsu, Mugen Skuyumi. With that, there will be either conflict nor wars, all within that illusion, shall fall into a dream-like trance. The Kazakage interjected, You think that plan of yours is actual true peace? I shall not allow it. You're only locking away the conscious thought of every human being. The water shadow added, What is there left if humans can't strive for their hopes and dreams? You're just a madman on a quest to fulfill his delusions. You think that we shall let this slide by? That such a kage added. The rakage then pointed to Madara, You just want the world for yourself. It was then that the Hokage spoke, You're just pounding on our freedom, you bastard. You've got no right to talk about peace when you're the one who decided to cause all of this pain in the first place. Madara then stood up and looked at every person in the room once again. It isn't as if I'd lose if you refuse. If you don't want to start a war, hand over the Hachibi and the Kyubi right now. 
as if we'd let you, the five Kages shouted. What do you mean hand over the Hachibi? Didn't you capture Killer B already? The Rakage questioned, Madara made a simple reply. No, the Hachibi escaped from our clutches, Sasuke didn't capture him. The Rakage then sighed in relief for a moment, and then angered by the thought of his brother slacking off once again, shouted, that bastard. I bet he's just enjoying himself on his vacation. He didn't tell me anything. When I get my hands on him, I'll eye and kuroi his ass. Madara then said, reconsider your options. You will all certainly be in quite a trouble if you decide to not give in to my demands. The seven bijou are nothing to scoff at. It was then that Naruto gave a firm reply, no. I won't allow a man like you to do what he wishes with the world. Your sick and twisted view on peace would never happen. I won't allow it. The remaining leaders of their respective villages nodded, Madara then said. All right, consider this day then that I, Achiha Madara, declare the fourth shinobi world war. Iron Country Borders Danzo had began to walk towards the three wolves' fang Ma. The crippled war hawk was accompanied by his best soldiers, Torian and Fu as the rest of his root ninjas began move and weave around the area. He looked up as he saw heard an explosion coming from the inside. Akatsuki has made a move, eh? The old warhawk mused, as he stared into the clouds that seemed to come from the center of the imposing landmark of iron. Torian, lead team Delta on the northern front, there are three exits here. I want Fu to go to the western side and I'll be here in the eastern side of the exit. We'll surround this place. The team stuck in Kanoha are on standby. Once the messenger hawk lands and is given the orders they'll assassinate Tsunade if he doesn't respond to my demands. The rest of the teams are to lock down Kanoha to prevent any reinforcements in coming out to here. When the Hokage is seen, await on my command. Danzo instructed and his fifty strong root forces all divided and scattered around the area. The winter winds howled and surged in that vague afternoon in Iron Country. For today, there will be blood. And that blood that shall be shed shall be the Hokage's blood. Danzo would again dirty himself, in the name of the village that he so fervently loves. Chapter 6 One Thousand Lamentations The Hokage's Will Chapter 6 One Thousand Lamentations War is a tragedy no matter how one sees it. In the midst of the fighting lay death, misery, poverty, destruction and hate. Nothing made sense in wars. It is probably the biggest atrocity of man that makes even Mother Earth weep. Such a travesty and convoluted life that humans live in. For be it victory or loss, there is only one thing that remains in the heart of people when all of the fighting quells. It was hatred. Aim being the center of three major powers and the focal point of every ninja war it had participated in, had felt this tragedy more than any other nation combined. Indeed, the country and village deserved its name, the Weeping Country the country of tears that had been shed by the departed souls who had fought for their ideals subdued many times in the past, the country of the people who shed tears in the midst of the never-ending rain for the men that had left their wives with their newborns never to come back. Nagato had been a victim of this war, a victim of circumstance, of incidents, of tragedy. His salt-laden tears would forever be mixed with the waters of aim and in his grief. But compared to others, he had in him, resolve. He decided to grow stronger, for the fact that he no longer wanted to lose anyone. Above all, he desired strength for one thing that would end all travesties of massacres and bloodshed. The child, bestowed with the noblest jujitsu, desired for peace as did the sage of six paths during his time. Once Naruto had heard of this circumstance that Nagato had, he couldn't help but feel the sympathy bulging inside of him. The ninja rulebook had told him before and probably left the most lasting impression in him to make him realize how his naivety would be useless in being a shinobi. Never sympathize with the opponent. Yet he did so, on so many occasions. Be it his worst enemy or not, the names kept appearing in his mind as well as their faces, Haku, Sasuke and Gara to name a few, he knew he shouldn't have done so back then, but for them to feel the same type of loneliness and pain of abandonment as him he couldn't help but show his sadness for them. Soldiers didn't need sympathy, humans did. He knew how terrible that nightmare of life was simply by just existing without a given purpose. He knew he fought in anger and rage when he was young, 
but never in hatred and contempt. Naruto could recall one fight that he had forsaken everything in him to defeat his enemy. It was against Kabuto. He could still remember how his anger triggered his hatred of the man so much, how betrayal can easily affect him. How one simple encounter with the man, he had to forego his ideals and just wanted to murder him. To him, Kabuto was evil, an evil that could kill anyone dear to him in cold blood. Kabuto, unlike Gara, had been given choices about his life, and that was what made Naruto hate the man. Kabuto chose to betray them, chose to follow Orochimaru, and chose to kill Tsunade in her most vulnerable. Gara didn't choose to kill people on a whim. Someone who had poor parental guidance in his childhood didn't know what he was doing was wrong. There was no one to guide him back then, and even if he did have one, they chose to use Gara's fragile mind to their liking. It was utterly disgusting. It was this feeling again, rising within him as he stared at the masked form of Uchiha Madara. A man, so bent on controlling the world with the palm of his hand, Madara didn't want peace, he wanted to play God. It was in that context that Naruto for the second time in his life showed that contempt and hatred upon the man that stood before him. This was the man that could have possibly manipulated Kiri's former Mizukage, Yugura, attacked Konoha with the Kyubi no Yuko, created Akatsuki, used Nagato, brainwashed Sasuke and now declared the fourth great shinobi war. How? Paradoxical it is that the Hokage of Konoha turned out to be you, Naruto. The kami must have an interesting sense of humor to favor you above Danzo as the sixth fire shadow. It's so similar that if it weren't so tense, I'd laugh at it. Mentioned the masked man that stood before him, Naruto remained silent as Kakashi stepped forward. Are you pertaining to the first Hokage, Senju Hashirama? Madara smiled beneath his mask and said, Exactly. And just like the days of old, Naruto and Sasuke shall meet in battle one after another as did Hashirama and I once did. Naruto frowned. What do you mean? It's fairly self-explanatory, Naruto. You and Sasuke, Senju and Uchiha, are fated to battle. Like the sons of the Rikuro Sinin, the Elder, who inherited the eyes of the sage, the power of his chakra and spiritual energy and the younger, who inherited his body, his willpower and physical energy, you two will fight on two sides. It's your fate. And with just that, Madara turned his back and gave a wave, a small distortion had appeared as he was sucked right in, saying his final word, the next time we meet, will be on the battlefield. And with that, Madara vanished just like he came. Ryu Tenbi no Inoki, the earth's shadow, shook his head and muttered. And so the gates of hell have opened. Thus leaves us with a crisis worse than that of the Third War. Such a pity that out of every sane human born into this world, there is always a man and that follows through. Gara closed his eyes and muttered, and to thus, tragedy bequeaths tragedy. Naruto closed his eyes for a moment and thought about the words that Nagato had left him the ninjas of Kanoha and the events unfolding now. His hands balled into fists as he punched a wall in frustration. Damn it! Unknown to many of the people inside the room, Naruto had bottled up the emotions that he felt ever since finding out about Sasuke joining the criminal organization. Revelation after revelation, Naruto wanted to stop for a moment and sit down, think about all of what's happened and finally make a decision. But Naruto couldn't do so, he didn't have the time. As the Hokage, his time was taken from him for his people. There could only be so many events to weigh someone down until they have reached a breaking point. Naruto was no better. Ever since being in this summit things have spiraled into chaos that it was just a matter of time, or any more revelations coming from an outside source and he would snap. Naruto would soon find it out to be sooner rather than later. Sakura's team Sakura and the rest were panting. They had to access a different route to the Kage summit that was taking place in Iron Country. They had been traveling nonstop. The two days that had been there estimated was cut short, running through the whole of Fire Country in a day's worth of travel. When they knew that their friend would be in great danger, Sakura didn't want that. Losing Sasuke was enough. Losing Naruto would be a devastating blow to everyone. Once they had reached the borders of Iron Country, Niji and Hinata's Byakugan were on their highest fields of vision scouting for hostile ninjas that were members of Root. Shikamaru looked up seeing the gray clouds and the falling snow, slowly descending to the ground, Shikamaru sighed. 
Not two weeks of rest and the clouds are so gloomy. This is a troublesome situation we have here. Niji mentioned to them. There's a team of Kanoha and Biu to the east, three kilometers from us, it might be root. We should lie low and slow down for a moment, we need the rest. They took that moment to slow down for a few minutes, as they remained hidden from sight and sat in uncomfortable silence. Sakura had looked on, grasping the cloth on her thighs in a tight grip. Shikamaru, how many forces do you think Danzo has in this summit? The ever-lazy tactician merely looked up above the gray clouds that seemed to remain static in the sky. There are five powerful ninjas that have earned the title of Kage, and of those five, they have two elite bodyguards, the closest they have to the level of an ANBU captain or higher, each. Putting that into perspective, there's fifteen elite ninjas that are A to S class levels. If Danzo plans to have an assault force strike the meeting, then he would need to play with the numbers game, quantity versus quality. I don't know Danzo's motives but you can be sure that he may know something we don't. Hinata activated her Birkugan once again, checking out the clearing that they rested on, there were no hostels in sight. There's a team of Kanoha Shinobi Station just directly in front of us, five kilometers, there are three of them, do we intercept them or do we avoid them? Shikamura shook his head, we're nearing the summit venue. Right now, the shortest goal is the most important goal, and that is to inform the Hokage on the attempted coup and if possible, cripple some of the numbers to turn into our favor. Shikamura then continued right now, Kanoha can't probably send for reinforcements, being that the village would be in lockdown. The safest bet is to let the ninja left in there to take care of Root. My father is a good strategist. Once he got hold of the information, he's already thought of counterattack measures. No doubt that the village would be stalled long enough for Danzo to act. My guess is that he's carrying more than a hundred shinobi at his disposal. But I have a bigger fear on what might happen if Danzo pulls off his operation. Everyone remained silent as Shikamura continued. We're taking them down, fast and hard. We'll use hit and run tactics and make a beeline straight to the summit venue. Shikamura then explained what they had to do. Countless scenarios played out in his mind as it began to work fast. Hit and run tactics were much more dangerous and risky than ambush tactics. For one, it left quite a mess in the aftermath. Another reason would have to be that they needed to make sure that they move fast. Strike fast and make sure their target's down while running away to make no scenarios of pursuit. Blitzkrieg tactics were highly effective if you knew the abilities that are presented to you based on the information gathered beforehand. As it is, you knew where and how to strike when using such a strategy, and that is to where the enemy will be blindsided the most and to hit them in such speed and accuracy that it becomes devastating for the enemy to follow through. But then it becomes completely useless when the gathered information is incomplete. Once they got closer to the station the NBU forces, all four of them kept quiet and crept in silence, as three stationed elite ANBU forces immediately had their guards up. Sakura had appeared from above, her right fist drawn back as an immense amount chakra gathered on her fist giving off a blue glow. She struck down below, releasing the chakra to the earth, shattering the hard matter below. Slabs of earth rose from the ground as the cracks from the earth gave way and forced the three masked ninjas to jump. In a quick motion, Sakura dashed away from them, bolting forward at high speed. As soon as they saw what the pink-haired shinobi did, realization dawned on them too late. Countless shadow needles had appeared from the ground, piercing the first ninja with the hawk mask. The shadow needles protruded from countless parts of his body including his head as blood was drawn from the man. Not a second too soon, two more ninjas appeared. Jumping from the canopy of trees as the first gave a direct palm strike to the chest as the other pierced directly at the back of the head and then to the throat, severing the chakra pathways and also the windpipe effectively suffocating the man before he could shout for an ambush. Quickly, the ninjas left away without turning back. Shikamaru made sure to leave a message for the remaining members via an explosive note planted on the ground as they approached the giant landmark of the country of iron, the three wolves Fang Ma. Shikamaru knew then, that if they were detected right now, it would most probably be too late. They were already nearing the entrance. As a famous general had once said during the First Shinobi World War. The die has been cast. Kanoha. Everyone in the small room were tense. Indeed, 
There had been activities that some of the ninja began to question when root forces were expected to do gate guardian duties on the four main gates of the village that were supported by the outermost wall. Once news had been received of the attempted coup, however, the shinobi who are loyal to the Hokage quickly commenced a secret meeting inside the makeshift house that Yamato cleverly disguised as one of the reconstructed houses in downtown Kanoha. Shikaku made his presence known with a small cough and spoke, All right, due to a reliable resource, Yamato and Shizen had informed you of the threat that is about to happen. That bastard, Danzo, Hokage-sama should have taken care of that man when he had the chance. Shouted one of the ninjas, some nodded their heads, Shikaku merely shook his head. No, the Hokage knows how grave the situation in Kanoha has become, just with the money for reconstruction alone. The resources that Kanoha is dishing out is being stretched thin. Hokage-sama didn't want to confront Danzo as he knew just how every ninja in Kanoha right now is vital to the village. This puts Danzo on a better edge than Hokage-sama. Danzo is in command of one-third of our ANBU forces. Naruto-sama acknowledges that he needs all the helping hands he can get, and that's why he's been lenient on the man. Simply taking care of that war hawk would have put this village into a worst-case scenario that would have left us more vulnerable than we are right now. One of the shinobi then remarked, Then what are we supposed to do? Sit back and let this happen. I won't allow it. Shikaku replied, Who says we will allow it either? We are Kanoha shinobi, and therefore, anything hostile instigated against us would be met with the most proper course of action. Men, as a member of the Council of Elders, we are going to retaliate. The shouts of affirmation were heard from the shinobi inside the room. Shikaka placed a hand under his chin as he began to think. Yamato, since we can't take the fights to the streets, we're taking their stupid usurpation matters on the outer walls. I want you to be there and deliver enough chaos with your abilities so the rest can take them out when they're in their most vulnerable. Ginma, Reido, you two will be with Shizen to guard one possible target that might turn the favor more to Danzo. All three nodded as Shikaku continued, There is an important factor that must be kept protected as she is the weight to tip the scales. I want the three of you to guard Tsunade. No doubt if Danzo kills her, it would be a terrible blow to the sixth. Shikaku then approached the remaining rookie nine of three years ago. They were tense as the councilman approached them. I trust that you will adhere to what I have in mind. Shikamura mentioned that your age groups seem most affected to this crisis. They all nodded, and looked at each other, Kiba spoke for them. We had a talk about what happened five days ago. We found out what happened to the Uchiha. Shikaka nodded and then said, Good, it's good that the generation that will follow us are decisive. That means you're all prepared now. I'm sorry it must be hard, but if you must know, it was even harder for the Hokage to decide. Keep that in mind. Nakama are Nakama after all, no matter what happens. Right now, I need all of your help. They could only obey and wonder what might happen next. Summit Naruto felt chakra signatures flaring everywhere, just before his sage mode was on the verge of ending. He felt four familiar chakra signatures approaching the landmark at a blistering pace. The fire shadow mentioned out loud in front of the delegates, there are countless chakra signatures around the summit numbering by the hundreds. What's going on? The said people looked bewildered at the Hokage for a moment, until one samurai stopped in front of them after a long dash and spoke, Mifun-sama. There are Kanoha shinobi who are seeking an audience with Hokage-sama. They say it is urgent business. The fire shadow raised his left eyebrow in wonder. What could have brought a team from Kanoha here that was urgent business? It seemed utterly important, and worthy of his attention if they needed shinobi to deliver the news instead of messenger birds. I'll entertain them, send them in. The other Kages can discuss the battle plans without me for a moment. I need to know what's going on in the village if this is that important. Mifune disagreed. No, as the commander-in-chief of this alliance, you are needed to discuss the battle plans with us, Hokage Dano. It is your pivotal role. Naruto nodded. There was no turning back now. As the presented head of the alliance, he could not afford to state his absence in such a critical moment. The pressure that he could feel from the responsibilities was overwhelming. Naruto wanted to rest. He wanted a break from this responsibility. He wanted to run. As soon as the samurai had escorted the four ninja inside, 
Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as his jaw slightly dropped. In front of him were a tired and disheveled troop consisting of Shikamaru, Sakura, Niji, and Hinata. Naruto wanted to ask if they were all right, but the urgency written on their faces forced Naruto to stop. These people were going to report to him on what had forced them to run all the way from Kanoha. What's happening? Naruto asked, his voice commanding and concerned of his subordinates. The four ninjas, in the midst of their heavy breathing, stood in attention as Shikamaru, the assigned team leader, reported to Naruto in a courteous manner, Danzo-sama is instigating a coup d'etat. He has forces stationed outside. The number of their forces are undetermined. Sai reported to us that he's planning to assassinate you. Naruto stood there for a moment. Now he really needed to sit down. All this events playing on such short notice was driving him mad. A pain familiar to any Kage had surged in his head. How he wished he didn't have taken the seat in the first place. The blonde sighed as he sat down, massaging his temples in frustration. Thanks for the heads up, Shikamaru. Rest for a while here. The Reiki jied the Hokage as his gaze narrowed on the fire's shadow. What's the meaning of this, Hokage Dano? Naruto gave a simple reply. I'm as confused as you are. Mifune then looked at his two personal guards and nodded. The leader of Iron Country then looked at Naruto and spoke. You are now the head of this Six Village Alliance. As it stands, any intention of harm to the Supreme Commander must be met with swift retaliation. Therefore, Hokage Dano, I am willing to lend you my men. Naruto inwardly cursed, the burdens were piling up, one problem after another. He seemed to somewhat glare at the leader of iron for putting such faith upon him. He didn't want to be part of this at a crucial rate. As far as he knew, it would feel like he was betraying the teachings Jiraiya had left for him, what Nagato had entrusted to him. Naruto loved his teacher, and for him to be in this crucial moment, it was frightening to think about showing his back to the trust and words of his former master. It was unfair for the man. Naruto, why do ninja fight? His master's voice spoke to him, asking a question that had a simple answer, to protect their precious people. The blonde mentioned with a wide grin that put the sunlight to shame. Jiraiya eyed him with a curious gaze then gave a slight smirk, ruffling his dear apprentice's head. Naruto looked on in a confused stare, wondering what was his master's gesture before. The lives of humans are strange, Naruto. In nature, we are probably savages on crack. We have the ability to think, control our instincts, and adapt. Yet, we can't completely get over them, our instincts. Reasoning is a given to us. Then again, ninja tend to go by the saying kill one, save a thousand. I don't get it, was the blonde's reply, tilting his head and scratched it with his right hand. Jiraiya laughed all the same as he sat down near the blonde. The two of them took a break after an intense day of training. Jiraiya sat down beside the blonde as they both stared on the orange sunset. Neither do I. But that's just what part of being human is. We aren't perfect creatures, but we are closer to the level that other animals can't grasp. No, I meant that thing, kill one, save a thousand. Naruto interjected. Jiraiya seemed to scratch his head as well as Naruto continued, I mean, what's the point of killing someone and saving a thousand if it won't even get to that number? That's stupid. Jiraiya laughed even further of his apprentice's approach to this specific topic. So you consider those you fight as a part of that group of a thousand? Naruto nodded his head and replied, Of course. They're human, aren't they? Everyone deserves a chance to live. Look at Gara. Jiraiya seemed pleased to this and in his curiosity of the blonde's logic, he asked Naruto one simple question, Then what about those people that want to hurt your precious people? You mean like Kabuto? Asked Naruto. Jiraiya nodded. Naruto seemed a loss for words at that moment. He never really thought this through. He hated Kabuto, as much as Orochimaru. They were the ones that taught him a lesson that made him angry at himself. Kabuto betrayed his trust. Orochimaru killed the Sandame. Old man, kind and understanding Sandame, Orochimaru killed him, and sought Sasuke as a new body. He hated the snake bastard. Makes you want to kill that person, huh? Naruto looked at his master and nodded. Jiraiya smiled. You understand well, Naruto. So what will happen if by chance, you encounter Orochimaru? Are you just going to talk to him and ask Sasuke to free him? 
What about Akatsuki? Are you just going to talk to them and let you be off? I'll fight them, was Naruto's firm reply. Jiraiya couldn't detect the hesitation in his apprentice's voice. It was unwavering, so calm yet so full of determination and grit. The older man then, for the second time that day, ruffled his apprentice's hair. That's right, when everything seems like it's falling apart in talks, there's only one thing that ninja do best to prove their point. People fight for what they believe is right. When all talks end, there's only fighting that remains. We are the people that will bring our world to a new age. Jiraiya mentioned and continued, Killing is a sin, Naruto. You know this, I know this. However, shinobi live a life of battle, of death. We've been oriented on this when we were in the academy. However, never for once, think that all life is expendable. All life is precious, no one is a tool. Do you understand that? We aren't kami, but we are creatures given intellect and free will. However, when a wrong is done to us in the first place, then don't back down. Face it head on. And fight. Strife is born when one asserts their aggression. Konoha isn't like that. We are a village of diplomacy that has a military for protection. Naruto mentioned to himself as he got up and mentioned to Mifune, All right, have your samurai on standby on each of the entrances. I'm sending a recon force on each entrance to the main building. I'll determine the number of the forces that Danzo has. The Mizukage looked at that steel gaze that the fire shadow had outwards. She then looked at Mifune and frowned. Mifune intends to test the fire shadow and leadership. Up until now, the Hokage had declared that he was not suitable to be the supreme commander for the alliance. The fire shadow perhaps foresaw how the events would lead to a failure of the alliance if he assumed command. Then why would Mifune still entrust the safety of his men to Akage not even a few months into power? The only logical answer was that the leader of Iron Country was testing Naruto's ability in leadership and strategy. These are your men, Hokage. Even if they are a faction not from yours, they are still ninja of your village. Are you willing to destroy them to stop this? The lightning shadow then pointed to the Hokage who didn't flinch as he placed his hands together and began to mold chakra. The surge of the energy grew around him as the chakra began to circulate around the Hokage as he used a familiar, Middle index cross seal. Taju Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Multiple shadow clone technique. And within the room, hundreds of copies of the fire shadow popped into existence, as each one of them jumped into every which way to try and determine the size of the force that Danzo had placed. Naruto turned his head to the rakage and spoke, his voice was hoarse. The fatigue and backlash of making the jutsu made him tired as sweat fell from his brow. My faith in my ninjas is absolute. Root has been an organization independent of the Hokage's administration and ruling. Danzo created the foundation to have some sort of political power within Kanoha. Along with it though, were under the table deals that Danzo has made without the notice of the Sandame Hokage. The most memorable to me was his meddling in the affairs of Amage Kure. The blonde then continued, my sensei said once, Cry for the enemies you have slain and offer one thousand lamentations for your comrades who betrayed you. The rakage was then silenced as Naruto turned his back on the Kages. Mifune glanced at the fire shadow that stood before him, his back present as he walked towards his soldiers and helped them get rested in one part of the room, talking to the one with the hair held back in a ponytail. Outside The explosion on the western entrance of the imposing landmark echoed through the skies in a thundering sound. Fohead approached the area and saw three down Foundation members taken out by that explosion note. In urgency, the emotionless Root member ran towards his leader and reported the situation. Once the Root operative reported to their leader, Danzo frowned as he looked towards the structure that housed the meeting inside. Danzo told his men to stand down. It would be far too late to withdraw now. Still, numbers were on his side right now. He had approximately 400 men stationed outside the entrance of the summit venue. If the people from the inside do not realize the numbers that he had, then he would still have that advantage. An assault like that meant that the attempted coup was discovered. Fu hadn't known what had particularly leaked the information about Root and its machinations during the five days that had occurred in the absence of the Rokadame Hokage. Danzo, who knew of Akatsuki's reaction to the summit beforehand, being the summit an event that the said organization would dare not to ignore, 
thought it would at least cripple the Hokage or even one of the Kages in the process. That foolish leader from Iron would select the Fire Shadow as the head of the alliance for various reasons. For one, the protection of the Jinchuriki placed on Naruto was a thing that the Sandame implemented well and continued on to Tsunade's reign. The protection given to Naruto brought an example to the other villages on how they should handle their super soldier programs. Naruto, who has barely shown any results in complete sync with the Kyuubi, was their result. A failure, Kanoha's Jinchuriki program wasn't adequate. Naruto wasn't taught on how to handle the Bijou, the Sandame had forbidden anyone to do so as it would only bring about danger to both Naruto and the village. Danzo scowled at that, the Sandame was foolish in not letting such an egg hatch in his care. Naruto would have grown to an ideal super soldier. Completely loyal to the interests of Kanoha, this super soldier would have been a weapon formidable even against two Bijou. The Kyuubi was the strongest Bijou after all. Why not capitalize on such a gem? Another reason that the Hokage would be selected was how they had handled Akatsuki before. Konoha, as well as Suna, had been waging skirmishes against Akatsuki for the longest time, a span of three years. While Kumo didn't know the existence of Akatsuki until Niyujito, host of the two-tailed monster cat, had been captured by them. That or the country turned a blind eye on the said organization as it had not affected the village in any way, it had no experience in handling the organization. Right now, of the major powers, the biggest military powerhouse that was currently at the top, with Kanoha invaded and almost destroyed, Kumo is the biggest and most powerful of nations, having resources based on mining of precious metals. Kumo had the firepower and brunt of the alliance, but it did not have any strategy implemented to face Akatsuki, who currently held almost all of the Bijou. IWA was another problem, according to Danzo's spy network. IWA had dealings with Akatsuki, used them quite often, and paid a hefty amount for mission work. Discovering of how much of a commodity was Akatsuki to IWA, Mifune would not place his trust on Anoki, the Earth's shadow. Fu, return to your post. As alarming as the leakage of information from Root is, this is a crucial moment now. We can't afford to back down. What with them knowing of our position, we just have to strike when they least expect it. It was then that numerous clones of the Fire Shadow had sworn from the summit venue going out and jumping in every which way. Danzo had once again recalled one trait that the Kyuubi Jinchuriki had gained upon his return to the Leaf Village. The Nine Tails host had learned the proper use of Kage Bunshin. Realization dawned on the leader of the Foundation and turned his head to Fu, informed Torian that under any circumstances, should they not reveal themselves in front of the clones that the Hokage has made, if those blasted clones discover the fighting force that we have, they are sure to come up with a counter-offensive. Danzo commanded his most elite and Fu nodded. Danzo had looked as the swarm of clones began going about in a random way, scoping the large area and seeking out any root operative. Danzo had hoped that the numbers game would definitely intimidate the Kages. What with Mifun and the samurai being neutral parties, he had imagined that they would not get into the conflict of Shinobi. It should be noted that Naruto had the ability to produce 1,000 clones at the maximum, and that the clones had a wide range that they can cover. It would only be a matter of time before his forces would be discovered. Summit The waiting game was always tense. Naruto sat in lotus position, the tips of each of his finger touching each other. As he waits for the influx of information relay from his clones, he focused on gathering more nature chakra from the atmosphere as the delegation per country began to talk. Gara took initiative. Before we take care of this nuisance, are we all willing to form an alliance now? The Mizukage glanced to her side and spoke to the Reikage. I seem to recall you are opposed to the idea, Reikage Dano. The Reikage remained silent as he stared upon the quiet and concentrating form of the Hokage. The lightning shadow then turned towards the Mizukage and said, I refuse to let Akatsuki have their way with us anymore. I will not allow that man-man to succeed in his plans. If this is the only way to oppose the power of the seven Bijou in Madara's forces, then I have no other choice. It was surprising, however, that the Hokage had been right about his brother still being alive. Kanoha Nins do tend to know more than the average shinobi. Perhaps they had been doing right in waging those skirmishes against Akatsuki and sending all of those request aids to the different villages and handling the organization. The rakage seemed at a loss for a moment then. 
It was foolish to have left an organization like that unattended for so many years, and now, the effect of their struggle had borne fruit to an ugly situation. The water shadow began to share her idea to the leaders, if we are to stop this Suki no Mi plan, then we must not, by any means, allow Madara to take into possession the Hachibi and the Kyubi. Right now, our priority is to secure the Hachibi and hide it away from him. With the host of the Nine Tails with us, the only thing left to do is to keep them from the clutches of Madara. The Mizukage then made it a point to emphasize her opinion stating that the two remaining hosts were a pivotal to the success of the war. If they could secure the Eight Tails host along with the Nine Tails, then this pointless war would be determined immediately. The Earth Shadow then replied, Madara might have a plan or a jutsu to make use of those beasts. Seven of the nine bijou under his command is unimaginable. If ever we fight this, without a veritable amount few injutsu artisans or any bloodline to control those beasts, we have a long and difficult war ahead of us. An idea then stormed through the mind of the Tsuchikage. How about we incorporate the Hachibi and the Kyubi as one of our forces? To this, the wind shadow immediately denied the Tsuchikage's request, unthinkable. Protecting them is a vital part of this war. To this, the Kazakage continued, I have a suspicion that he's using this war to lure out the hosts of the Eight and Nine Tails, what with his current weakened state and the few remaining members of Akatsuki, even if he succeeded, the risks would certainly be high. The Mizukage and the Reikage seemed to agree to that as well. At any rate, we can only deploy them at a most crucial rate. Besides, my brother is not one to follow instructions. A wild card like him will only bring confusion on the battlefield. Gara glanced to Naruto for a second thinking of the same thing, until he looked back to the rakage. 420. Naruto then stood up, as the red rings from his eyelids appeared once again as his eyes opened, he said to the people in the room, as the clones from outside began to dispel, one by one. 400 ANBU troops, all from the root division, and a suggestion to our current discussion, I won't let this war drag on. Besides, Madara has a jiken cook and ninjutsu, time-space ninja arts, he can travel in that of the speed of light or even faster, it's impossible to escape from him for very long, he can cover a fair amount of distance with that technique of his, if he's going to target us as well as the Hachibi. Then we need to have at least more than just a platoon for guards, particularly those of ANBU captains, Akatsuki would push for us the moment the first sign of battle commences. If we intend to put a stop to this, then we would need to take into account of Madara's abilities as well as his remaining accomplices. I don't want to sit around and be protected. I'm a pivotal part of this war. I'd be damned if I just stand by. Madara also issued to negotiate with us. He wanted us be presented to him. And although he may have an ability to control the bijou, it might possibly have some sort of backlash to him if he wanted to go through all this trouble to inform us. He then turned his head towards the leader of iron and spoke, prepare an appropriate amount of samurai, Mifyundano. Do samurai have any long-range specialists as well? Mifu nodded, we have long-range specialists for samurai that excel in Kyudo, way of the bow, what do you intend to do with them? Naruto began his instruction, place them on the highest perch on each of your landmarks, and we'll force them out of formation right for the samurai to mow down. They may have genjutsu specialists in each side of the gate, so we at least need someone to immediately break down a genjutsu specialist per side of the gate. Can you all trust me with this battle plan? The delegates looked at the Hokage's sharp gaze and listened to the firm resolve in his voice. It was funny in some sense, they feel like they could trust the Hokage that well, and the plan that the Hokage had gave, it was actually pretty good. The Hokage then glanced to the tactician from Kanoha and asked, well, Shikamaru, what do you think? Shikamaru smirked, Why are you asking me, Hokage-sama? If you want my opinion, then I'd say it could work. Anyway, the needed rest is all that we need to get up and fight again. Naruto grinned at Shikamaru and then turned his head back towards his delegates, Then my question now is, Will any of you lend me your aid? Or will you leave me alone to deal with this problem? The Reikage gave a grunt and turned his head, the sooner we deal with this nuisance the faster we can locate and secure my brother, time is precious, and the more we waste our time here, the closer Akatsuki is to their goal. I will give you my aid, however, after this war is over, we part our ways, Hokage. I don't expect you to, Reikage. 
The fire shadow remarked with a simple grin. He then looked at Gara who nodded and said to him, I owe my life and ideals to you, Hokage Dano. Consider me forever in your debt, as Kazakage and representative of Sanagakir. My strength is yours. The Kazakage had extended his hand to the sixth fire shadow as gesture of a handshake. Naruto smiled and shook his hand with Gara's. Once they let go, Naruto turned to face at the Mizukage. The Mizukage gave a sly smile at the Hokage and leaned in closer to the blonde, their faces merely centimeters apart. Naruto gulped and adjusted the noose of his clothing as the Mizukage mentioned to him, You are indeed a very reliable Hokage, and even more as a man. The world should have more people such as you, Hokage Dano. The water shadow then gave a wink to the fire shadow who merely laughed nervously, earning quite a few incinerating stares from his subordinates, from the pink-haired one and the female Hyuga and from the boy with glasses that was the Mizukage's escort. Che, if teaming up with the son of the yellow flash is the only out of this situation then who am I to argue in the end? That Tsuchikage merely said as his two subordinates jumped down from the ceiling and stood beside the earth's shadow, Naruto merely nodded and then said, Good, then I'll take the eastern gate, and since I have more of my ninja present at this moment, two of the kages will take over one side of the entrance. I'll handle the eastern side since Danzo is there. Mifune then walked towards the blonde and spoke to him. Very well then, I shall accompany you to your side, Hokage Dano. Naruto smirked and then said to the leader, Let's go, then. As each of the leaders split into three directions, the samurai had begun to move per instructions of the Hokage, with their leader's authorization. Outside. A domino effect happens when one piece of the set falls down, it leads to another, to another, then to another, until every single block of those things fall down. Danzo didn't know who had started the tipping of the initial piece, but if that leakage of information had been spread, it was most likely that Kanoha had already organized to stage a counterattack on each of the gates, with the Kanoha shinobi pushing back his forces from the streets of the recently reconstructed downtown. Danzo held his cards close to his chest now. Everything will make or break in this very moment. A spike of chakra had interrupted his thinking as he looked above, the skies of Tetsu were dull and gray. There were no open spaces in the sky to view the stars at night, only clouds that snowed hard. So why then, did he see something akin to stars as he continued to gaze up? Realization soon dawned on him and mentioned to all the station platoons, move out. The ninjas scrambled out of the way as the arrows had pierced the ground. Two ninja, who were unlucky enough to be caught in the pelting rain of metal and wood, were pierced on the head, the arrow tip penetrating to the porcelain, ceramic ivory-white mask, instantly killing them. As another pelt of arrows descended from above and had pierced numerous parts of their bodies, Danzo gritted his teeth, as he too, dashed and avoided the raining death, his troops clearly soon became disorganized as the flight of arrows had made them scramble out of their position. One particular member of Root, however, decided enough was enough and clasped his hands together for a sequence of seals. Dotan, Doria Hiki Earth release, earth wall formation. A land mass of the earth wall erupted from the ground and curved upwards acting as a barrier from the hail of arrows that descended to their area. Taking shelter from the hail of death, Danzo turned his head for a moment as he saw what seemed to be the opening of the gates of hell. Kanoha. Commenced the counterattack. Shikaki gave his command as the ninjas began to move out with Yamato heading for the northern gate. Shikaka looked up in the clear skies of Kanoha that day. All of these instabilities causing around his village, Shikaka could only surmise that something big is about to happen if it involved Danzo showing face to the public. Things were spiraling out of control. Something was plunging this world to anarchy. But lest he wanted to die, Shikaka would rather go down fighting. What was supposed to be a normal day in the village hidden in the leaves would turn out to be bloody. Not even the history book will ever remember this day for the secret war within Kanoha was reaching its climax. Iron Country Danzo Once the Warhawk had heard his name, he immediately recognized that voice, the voice of the person that had vehemently denied him of his seat. Once he discreetly put out his head for a moment, Danzo saw a battalion of samurai, wearing their famous bulky white armor and helmets, bulldozing their way towards him. The fire shadow in the middle, his right hand had with him, a Fuma Shuriken. 
The ninjas of Root scattered, deploying in each side of the earth wall, dashing towards their target, the Hokage. As they body flickered all around, the samurai began to dash forward, pumping chakra to their feet and swords, they parried the strikes coming from the Root and Biu, as the frontline swordsmen swung their swords high, cutting down the first five Root members that came in contact with their swords. Disemboweling two Root members and decapitating another one, the legion of the samurai were charging through Danzo's lines of defense. The Hokage had jumped, his Fuma shuriken fully opened and with his wind chakra surging like the divine wind, he threw the menacing projectile through the earth wall, severing it horizontally forcing the ninja who had taken shelter there to move out as the earth wall collapsed from the sheer force of the wind chakra. The swordsmen then separated, intent of taking down Danzo's forces swatting away kunai and shuriken with their swords and armor. Naruto had met with Danzo face to face. I knew I should have dealt with you. Back then when you didn't have your abilities. Danzo spoke in a condescending tone to the Hokage, who then replied, and allowed someone like you? To be Hokage? To deliver your own citizens to their deaths? To force more hatred on our nation? I don't think so. I have made those decisions in the best interests of our village. Danzo remarked. Interfering with the political situation in AIM does not make it for our best interests. You saw what happened. You saw the effect of your actions on the day pain invaded. Naruto recalled those horrifying hours, those events that lead to one disaster after another. All because of the Sand AIM's teachings. Danzo replied in a clam manner, opening his uncovered eye. Peace does not exist inside diplomacy, naive child. Humans do not have it in their nature to sympathize with those not in their community. Survival of the fittest. We as ninja continue to live in the life of misery and hate, all for the sake of our village. We are coated in blood, only to bring about a new age for us to walk forward. We can't stop and wait for the weak. Death and violence is the way of the ninja. Petty words and bonds do not mean a thing. Naruto growled at the man. Who are you to lecture me about human nature? Naruto instantly appeared above the bandaged man, fist cocked back. Letting his punch fly to the man, who made dash further away from Naruto, the snow was instantly scattered every which way and Danzo said to Naruto, It would be terrible if I was hit with that punch of yours. My sources say you learned a style that could deliver quite a good amount of damage that doesn't require you to hit your opponent in close range. Naruto didn't stop there as his hands clasped together to perform his trademark jutsu, Kaige Bunshin no Jutsu Shadow Clone Technique Three clones popped into existence around Danzo, who jumped and with his only arm, created a half-seal and blew fire from his lips. Katan Hausenka, Fire Release, Mythical Fire Flower The fireballs instantly struck the three clones and dispelled them quickly. Danzo landed on the ground gracefully. Naruto was quick to appear from the smoke. The distance that he had created was instantly closed. Naruto then let out a powerful punch aiming for Danzo's head. Danzo raised his available arm and created a seal. Danzo was instantly replaced by a patch of snow once Naruto's fist went through the man's head. Naruto turned around and saw Danzo to his side, his Sharingan eye unraveled from the bandages for all to see. Naruto didn't once look surprised from Danzo. I thought as much as the mastermind of the Uchiha massacre would do something such as this. Naruto remarked, his eyes unmoving from the man. Danzo seemed surprised at that. How much do you know? About enough dirt that could cause the public outrage to have your head on the platter. Naruto replied, Madara wasn't exactly a good keeper of secrets. Danzo visibly frowned at this. Then I can have you roaming in this world with a secret that big. Danzo flicked his hands, about to strike Naruto with a more powerful fire jutsu until Naruto had appeared at his back in a blinding speed. Danzo jumped as Naruto was about to deliver a sweeping kick. Danzo then inhaled deeply and shouted, Katan, carrier Enden, fire release, fire dragon napalm. A stream of red-hot flames escaped from Danzo's mouth, as it took the image of a dragon head surging through the atmosphere and collided against Naruto as the superheated flames consumed the snow on the ground, melting it and evaporating the liquid. Naruto had appeared amidst the flames, the hem of his Hayori swaying and dancing in the hot and cold winds besides the dancing orange flames of Danzo's jutsu. 
His sage eyes seemed glowing as he was standing in the conflagration of the carrier Endin. Danzo inwardly cursed, there was no way he could take on this boy without another arm. He was still incomplete. He can't be allowed to die here. Retaining his stoic expression, Danzo still had another bargaining chip in his hand. With his available arm, Danzo held up another hand seal and slammed his hand on the ground, revealing a set of birds that each had goggles on their heads. Uzumaki Naruto. You will hand over the title of Hokage to me or I shall kill one person that is very important to you. Naruto instantly froze. Danzo's simple smile crept upon his face. Danzo then said to the fire shadow, Yes, Tsunade had been a very good friend of yours, am I correct? It would be a shame if she were. Disposed off. Danzo then approached Naruto who were balling his hands into fists. The stress from earlier was rising again, and one by one, they were piling like unwanted garbage. Danzo then continued, just like your mother, Uzumaki Kushina. Such a beauty, to bad she had discovered my affairs within Amagekyo at that time. If she had not, the foundation would have left her alone. Naruto's anger quickly spiked to new levels, as he could feel himself getting lost in the sea of hatred and malice. He wanted one thing that made him understand Sasuke's emotion. Somebody killed his mother, a mother who he hadn't known, someone who could have provided him the love of a parent. Someone who could have told him stories, sung for him at night, and embrace him when he had nightmares. Danzo took it all away. He wanted revenge. Once the man had closed in on Naruto, awaiting his approval. In a swift move, Naruto's right hand flickered and immediately went to grab the man by the throat. Contempt and anger was gushing within him like a broken dam, as the waters of malice raged furiously within him. Snap. All your atrocities, all of the people that you have wronged. It ends today. Danzo kicked the blonde by the gut that made Naruto flinch, as Danzo had managed to jump and had sent the messenger summons fly towards Konoha. Naruto didn't care. Right now, at the very core of his thoughts, he wanted to kill Danzo. His golden irises began to change color, taking that of scarlet red as his pupil began to contort, and another line grew over the horizontal frog eyes growing perpendicular to the normal sage eyes, changing to that of a cross. The whisker marks on his cheeks began to etch deeper, as his claws grew and sharpened. His canines growing as well as he bellowed to Danzo. What made Danzo worry, however, was the denser chakra that seemed to have been present when Naruto had transformed to his six-tailed state. The potent energy was filling the air that seemed to permeate with nothing but pure killing intent. I'm going to kill you! Mindscape. Cool. What is this? The strengthened seal is siphoning my chakra to a level that was when it was weakened. And that chakra. It's neutralizing mine as well. The QB thought in panic, its chakra was being siphoned and converted at a faster rate, and to make matters worse, the potency of his very chakra was being cancelled by the nature chakra that Naruto had gathered earlier. Kakashi paused for a moment as he felt that spike of chakra emanating from Naruto, in panic, he had approached Hinata to describe to him what was happening with the chakra coils of their leader. Hinata nodded, focusing her jujitsu on Naruto's abdomen. She could see the free flow of chakra in the chakra pathways. The red energy seemed to lose potency as it began to mix with the chakra that had some sort of green hue inside clashing and cancelling each other out. Just then, it stabilized itself, as the four energies, nature, physical, spiritual, and yuki began mingling with one another. Hinata had said to Kakashi, and Naruto-kun has synchronized with his bijou. Kakashi looked incredulous at that moment, as he stared on their beloved leader. Naruto had outstretched his hand. The red chakra obeyed his will as the red chakra literally stretched from Naruto's hand in an open palm and grabbed Danzo by the waist. Naruto dragged the older man on the ground as he threw Danzo to the other side with his strength. Naruto wasn't done yet, and within his hand, blue energy began to contort and formed a spherical shape on his right palm, as wisps of chakra began spinning. The orb grew in size until it was about his height, and raised it above his head. Naruto then disappeared reappeared on top of Danzo. Danzo wasted no time in pulling off another technique from his arsenal. He had heard Orochimaru had developed this technique in order to escape a sure-hit attack from someone like Itachi. 
It was an advanced version of the Kawarini. Though it had notoriety for large consumption of chakra, it served its purpose. Naruto then slammed the giant raisingan on the crippled old man as it began to tore into him, grinding him to paste as the unstable circulation of chakra gave an earth-shaking explosion, vibrating and tossing away any loose object not stuck on the ground. The ground that the technique had smashed into was nothing more than a crater left, and standing on ground zero of his attack was the Hokage, who vanished and body flickered outside, at speeds that many would find near the levels as that of the Yandame. He had detected Danzo's chakra. Naruto's eyes widened as he saw the man struggling to his feet. Before he could make a move towards Danzo, he saw two ninja, each on his side, about to intercept him. Naruto, in his fit of rage, directed his anger on the root Anbu, mercilessly slashed the one on his left with his left claw upwards tearing of his mask and surgically cutting through his throat and eyes. Naruto then flickers his right hand. A kanai had popped from his sleeve and shoved it on the ninja's forehead to his right. He then retracted the kanai from the dead ANBU and then looked at Danzo with that murder-laden eyes of his. The ninja fell in heap, and Naruto raised his right hand. Red Chakra began to take the form of a clawed hand and grew in size. Naruto slammed it down, instantly going underground. The ground that it traveled into collapsed in a line that the chakra traveled as it popped from the ground like a geyser and grabbed Danzo by the waist. Naruto pulled the crippled old man back with much force dragging him to the ground at a speed of a freight train. Naruto held his foot out and stomped on the bruised and battered body of Danzo his kunai poised to strike the man dead. Naruto's inhibition about killing was soon forgotten. He didn't care about the flying swallows anymore. He just wanted one thing that would satisfy him of his bloodlust right now. Danzo's head. <laughs>